Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, Parallel Deku, back with another fanfiction. This is the movie of, what if Deku becomes chess genius? Now before starting, please give this video a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. To say Midoriya Izuku had had a bad day would have been an understatement. Ever since he had been diagnosed as corkless, like it was a disease, like something was wrong with him, when he was four, running from bullies had become a daily extracurricular activity for him. Kakin and the others usually didn't bother him much when he stayed quiet and unassuming, meaningless bruises and burns for him after school. Once he had done such a good job of being nothing in school that he managed to get away from the bullies having suffered nothing but verbal torment and a few shoves, none of which left bruises. But sadly, Today he had failed spectacularly at both staying a useless waste of space and running from Kakin and his friends. No one was home when Izuku stumbled through the door, a patchwork of bruises and burns with his school jacket in taters and rivulets of blood running down his face and arms. Thank God mom had the night shift at the hospital today. I'm home. He whispered to the empty house as he set about patching himself up. Shallow cuts and burn treatment were almost second nature by now so with luck, his mother wouldn't notice when she got home. Izuku hissed as he poured rubbing alcohol over the cut on his shoulder, cleaning it out. It wasn't very deep, luckily, but he had moved his arm a lot on the way home so it hadn't gotten a chance to start healing on its own. The cut was too big for a band-aid so he clumsily placed a gauze pad over it with his left arm and wrapped more around his arm to keep it in place. After finishing up putting burn cream on the new starbursts on his stomach and lower arms, Izuku moved to his desk. After staring at the computer screen doing nothing for five minutes, he decided to look through something other than hero forums for once. Since the bullies, see, Kakin, had blown up his homework he didn't have anything to do while he waited for his shoulder to close up so he could take a shower. Usually, he scrolled through hero forums, looking through new videos of hero fights and sometimes writing notes down in his notebook. He never posted anything. No one wanted his opinion and it wasn't like there was anything useful in his creepy mumblings anyways. But today, with the taunts of Deku, useless, worthless, ringing in his ears as a firm reminder of how he could never be a hero. He just couldn't do it. Sighing, Izuku glanced around his room. He would be the first to admit that it was a veritable shrine to all might and that his love of heroes might stray a little to the obsessive side, but there were other things in his room than all might merch. He had less prominent posters and action figures of heroes like Present Mike, Sir Night Eye, Snipe, Endeavor, Gang Orca, Wild Wild Pussycats, Fat Gum, Thirteen, Death Arms, and others. He even had some tributes, because most underground heroes didn't have official merch, to lesser-known heroes like Eraserhead, Nizu, and Gran Torino. But none of those drew his gaze as he scanned the room. Izuka settled instead on the single bookshelf of non-hero stuff in his room. Its lower shelves were filled with textbooks on school subjects, even those more advanced than his level as a first-year junior high student. The bookshelf also had his quirk notebooks, and the top shelf was filled with board games as complicated as Monopoly to as old-fashioned as chess. Chessa? Izuku had always liked playing the strategy game, mom said he had a knack for it too. He wondered if he could find an online chess playing server. That would be a good alternative to the painful hero forums, and who knows? He might get a few online acquaintances out of it. People who wouldn't know and therefore wouldn't judge him for being corkless. That was a little too much to hope for, wasn't it? <laughs> Nizu sipped his tea as he scrolled through the leaderboards for the chess site he'd been playing on for several years. He'd been the first place player on the local server for almost just as long, though no one knew it was him for obvious reasons. Although he tried to keep his media presence as a hero low so that he could orchestrate from the shadows more, being the principal of UA tended to carry a bit of publicity. At least here on the internet, he could occasionally find an intellectual challenge and no one judged him for being a corked animal, for obvious reasons. He hadn't had a challenge in a while though, although there was one user he was keeping his eye on. He liked to challenge only those users in the top 20 on the local Muzutafu server and while this, Smallmite001 wasn't there yet, they had been quickly rising over the past week to the top 50. In fact, if their status wasn't lying, they were currently playing the number 15 slot. 
that user liked to prey on beginner's luck players, like Small Might, and bring them down a peg or two. If Small Might won this game, not only would they be bumped into the top 20, their quick rise would also be proven to be due to skill, not beginner's luck. Not that Nizu would attribute such an impressive rise to something as inconsequential as luck, but at least Small Might would have the justification. Oh well, if Small Might had real skill the game would last a while yet and Nizu had papers to grade. He could check tomorrow what happened to the rankings and whether Small Might won or not. If he did though, Nizu was definitely inviting him to a game. He was looking forward to the challenge. Izuku should never have tried to trust his new teachers. Why should he have thought that middle school would be any different? Oh, poor Izuku, so clumsy and useless that he tries to pin losing his homework on the star students out of spite that weak, corkless Izuku will never be any close to their level. The same argument and pitying eyes Izuku had been dealing with since he was four. People looked at him like he was weak and useless. Play carefully with Izuku everyone he's corkless, like he had the plague, he was diagnosed, diagnosed, or like he was nothing but a pebble in the road, get out of my way, Deku. And he hated it, hated it. Mom always said that other people's opinions didn't matter, but she was wrong. When other people's opinions shaped how you were viewed by society and the paths your future could play out on, then they mattered. Then they were everything. At least no one on the internet knew. He was free from the real world weighing him down there. Izuka had received more praise and encouragement from people he beat at chess on that site than he had in his entire life since he turned four. He knew how fragile that was though. It was why he never gave any substantial answer to any personal queries, questions about his age, gender, occupation, and especially his quirk was responded to with a quick I don't want to give that information out or never responded to at all. Izuku relished in the freedom an anonymous account gave him. No one knew anything about him except that he lived somewhere in Yuzutafu and was good at chess. He's pretty certain that the person he beat yesterday, Starburst something, was in the top 20 on the server. Meaning he was probably in the top 20 now. He wasn't really certain what the ranking algorithm was but it would make sense that the higher ranked above you an opponent was, the more points you got when you beat them. Izuka wondered if he had any new opponents requesting a game today as he unlocked the front door. Oh, welcome home, Izuku. Mom called from the kitchen. Thank God he had managed to mostly avoid the bullies today. It was Mom's day off, so she would be more likely to notice. At least he had homework as a legitimate excuse today. I'm home, Mom. Izuku smiled as he walked into the kitchen. Mom was probably making katsudon. It was their off night tradition after all. Oh, I love katsudon. He said with a smile. Mom turned to ruffle his hair with the hand not holding the knife she was using to cut up pork. I know, my little green bean. Dinner's gonna be about an hour, why don't you go get changed and get some homework done? Darn, you beat me, ma. I was about to tell you that's what I was going to do. She laughed and turned back to the cutting board. Well hurry up then. Izuku laughed as she shooed him out of the kitchen. Mom had started working more night and evening shifts at the hospital she was an ER nurse at meaning she was either sleeping or still out when he got up, and usually at work when he got home. She still made him lunches or left him money when she was in a rush, but he rarely saw her anymore. Sometimes Izuku wondered if it was because it was such a disappointment to have a quirkless child. If he was a disappointment. Escaping to his bedroom, Izuku quickly patched up the few scrapes he had gotten today. Kaken always seemed, Inko and his mom Mitsuki were friends, to know when his mom's off days were and kept the damage low on them. Sometimes Izuku liked to imagine it was because he cared. But no matter the truth, at least he didn't have as many burns and got a physical reprise from the bullying those days. Although the verbal jabs were always escalated to compensate. Sitting down at his desk, Izuku quickly completed his homework. He'd read the textbook already, he knew he was only doing badly in class because the bullies kept him from doing much homework. He made sure to study so that his test scores could float his grades. Izuku, dinner's ready. One more question, mom. He called back, finishing up the last worksheet and rushing downstairs in long sleeves and sweatpants to hide the scars. It wasn't like mom could do anything about the bullying anyway, so why worry her? <laughs> Nedzu smiled at the screen as the game acceptance flashed across it. 
Small Might had indeed beaten the number 15 user and was now ranked number 18 on the server, qualifying as a challenger. Sipping his tea, Nedza smiled as Small Might made the first move. Small Might 001. Thank you for requesting this game, Tevil Genius. Tevil Genius. Of course, it was no problem at all. Your quick rise has proven you quite intelligent and proficient at chess. I am looking forward to the challenge. Small Might 001. Um, I hope I live up to your expectations. Slash. Nedzu shook his head at the screen. This person was too modest. They clearly had a talent for chess and the strategic thinking abilities to plan several moves in advance. Thirty or so moves in, it was clear that there was a little more planning and foresight going on behind Small Might's unassuming tag than he had originally suspected, or Nedzu was playing a computer. Because this user was playing like him. Not exactly like him, obviously, but with the same style of playing with thought-out counters to every possible move that went several moves in advance. Like him, Small Might planned out every move of the game. It was fun to finally have a good challenge to his intelligence, Nedzu thought with a maniacal smile. Two hours in, Nedzu was on his thirtieth cup of tea and had scared off four teachers who had tried to come in to turn in paperwork. While he hadn't been consciously meaning to scare them, the grin on his face probably had something to do with it. All right, the cackle every time Small Might made a move might be part of it too. Nedzu hummed as a thought occurred to him. Was Small Might only good at playing chess? Because, if this strategic and analytic thinking ability could not only be applied to chess but real-life scenarios as well, Nedzu had found someone he wanted to teach. He's pretty certain that several teachers fled the teacher's lounge after hearing that last cackle. Tevil genius. I know you have an anonymous account so aren't likely to answer this question, but I feel I have to ask after your stellar performance. Do you have an intelligence slash analysis quirk or something like that? Small might 001. Yeah. Something like that, I guess? Also, checkmate. Nedzu jerked his head back to the screen to evaluate the board. And well, Nedzu had just suffered his first defeat in a decade. He smiled. Now he really wanted to teach this person. Tevil genius. I must say, I am really impressed. This is the first time someone has beaten me in years. Small Might 001. Oh, sorry I broke your winning streak. TV Genius. Uh, do not apologize for something like that. I have been looking for a real challenge to my intelligence for decades. I'm ecstatic that I have finally found one. Small Might 001. I'm really not that smart though. I'm just a middle schooler and I'm barely passing my classes. A middle schooler. Perfect. Nedzu would have ample time to mold them when they reached UA. And if they went to a different school, he had blackmail on almost every single hero school principal in Japan. Tevil genius. Well, I'm sure there is a good explanation for that. After all, schools do not often grade based on the student's level of strategic and analytical thinking abilities. They prefer to rely on route memorization tests and book learning to evaluate students. With the exception of hero schools, of course. Small Might 001. You sure know a lot about the school system. Are you a teacher? Tevil genius. The principal to be more specific, but yes. I am a teacher. Small Might 001. That's cool. Nedzu frowned. There was something wrong with that response. From what little Nedzu had interacted with Small Might, he knew that they were cheerful and open. But that last response had seemed cold and closed off. Was it because he said he was a teacher? That did appear to be the most likely trigger of Small Might's behavior. However, if he was correct, that could imply some sort of discriminatory behavior from previous teachers, which would also explain the bad grades. But Small Might could also have simply been distracted, so he would leave that as a conjecture for the time. That didn't mean he wasn't dragging Power Loader up here the first chance he got to help him hack the site and find out who Small Might was though. Nedzu smiled as he walked into the teacher's lounge to kick Aizawa out. Today was a good day. Shoyuta pretended not to notice when Nedzu walked in. He had a reputation to uphold after all and if someone found out how alert he was when he was asleep then they wouldn't gossip around him anymore. Ah, uh, Aizawa. Did Yamada not drive you home today? Nedzu asked, seeing through him like usual. No, Shoyuta muttered as he rolled out of his chair to the floor with a grunt. 
I've got an early patrol today so I told Hizashi I would just do all of my school work here and head out. Nedzu nodded with that crazy smile still on his face. At least he wasn't cackling anymore. Cementos had gotten even paler when they heard that, and Midnight had quite literally run screaming from the room. Well then, do you happen to know if Power Loader is still here? Shoyuda was understanding Midnight's. Run the fuck away plan more by the minute. Nedzu only asked for Power Loader when he was going to be hacking something he wanted to be 10,000% certain he wouldn't be caught hacking. Uh, I think he left, Shoyuda said he hadn't heard any explosions from the support lab for the last hour so it was a reasonable assumption that he had kicked all his kids out and gone home. What do you want him for? Oh god, he was going to regret that question, wasn't he? Nedzu's grin impossibly got even wider. Oh, I need his help hacking into this chess site's database to track a user. That was not what Shoyuda had expected Nedzu to answer with. He was curious now, damn it. Oh well, Hizashi always said it was a race to see which would kill him first. His love of cats or his curiosity. Do I want to know your reasons? Oh, there was a kid who beat me. If anyone was asking, Shoyuda definitely did not whip around to look at Nedzu in shock so fast he tripped and face-planted on the floor. God help us all. Someone had beat Nedzu at chess. Someone had the strategic thinking abilities to rival Nedzu. Oh, he really hoped they were just one of those chess prodigies and couldn't apply that thinking to real life. Otherwise, they'd make a terrifying villain. Or worse, Nedzu would take them on as a student. So you want to track down the AI user and get revenge? He asked cautiously, praying that was all it was. Oh no, I know it wasn't any sort of fluke. I don't think the kid has an intelligence quirk either. And they're in middle school, Aizawa. I can't wait to mold them. Shoyuda was starting to understand Hizashi's dramatics a lot right now. Because, oh god. They were all going to die, weren't they? <laughs> Tevil genius was really nice. Izuku thought as he headed out to school the next day. They were really encouraging during the game and seemed to see him as a real challenge, as someone intelligent. Even though they were a teacher. Which just further showed how grateful Izuku was for the anonymous account. They'd act just like the rest of his teachers the moment they found out he was corkless. Everyone's attitudes changed when they found out and Tevil Genius would be no exception. They'd turn on him just like Kaken did. Hey Deku. Still wearing that ugly backpack? Haven't given you enough incentive to get rid of it yet? Speak of the devil. KK Kakchan, why you know how this is my F favorite backpack. Izuku stuttered out as he tried to shrink in on himself. If he curled up he could protect himself from Kaken's friend's attacks better. And burns on his arms and legs hurt less than on his stomach. Kaken laughed. Oh that's right. Of course, your worthless ass would like something as stupid as that bright yellow backpack. Kaken began lighting explosions off as he crept closer, just like those useless stalker notebooks you write about heroes in. You still have those, Deku? Of sea course, Kaksisichan, Izuku responded quietly, bringing his hands up to brace against the right hook he knew was coming. Kaken snarled and swung, the feeble block Izuku had put up only working to make him matter as he blasted it away. Izuku cried out as Kaken grabbed his backpack to swing him into a wall. Izuku crumpled to the floor as Kaken stepped back to let his lackeys take over sneering and kicking Izuku. Izuku tried to block out the pain as the beating continued. He'd only succeeded in doing it a few times before but he was able to drag himself to the nurse's office those few times instead of having to patch himself up. Feeling the foggy feeling curl over him, Izuku realized he'd managed it again. Thank goodness, he thought as he pulled himself up with the wall. The bullies had left a few minutes ago to get to class, he concluded as the sound of the school bell cut through his ears. Sighing, Izuku slowly made his way to the nurse's office. He definitely had a sprained ankle and the bruises the bullies had given him went deep. Deku! The nurse scolded the moment he pushed her door open. Uh, H. Hi, Suzuki-san, Izuku stumbled over to the bed she had pushed the curtain back from. Suzuki-san sighed in disappointment as he showed her the bruises. Deku, are you going to tell me what really happened this time? Izuku hung his head. Kaken and the others were bullying me again this morning, he admitted, waiting for her disappointment and the casting aside of the issue again. Deku, you really need to stop making up stories and blaming others for your reckless delinquent behavior and clumsiness. 
If you get into fights with others it's your fault for getting injured, besides you don't even have a quirk to defend yourself with. For goodness sakes you stupid child. Izuku flinched away, waiting for the rest of the lecture. He always told the truth when he came to the nurse's office out of some ill-gotten hope that Suzuki-san would take him seriously for once. I can dash, he began, and stop trying to place the blame on Bakugu. I know his quirk is perfect for heroics, but no matter how envious you are of him you can't use that as an excuse to frame him for things he would never do. How many times do I have to tell you that he has no history or basis? He calls you a childhood nickname for goodness sakes, to do such a thing. Besides, he wants to be a hero, doesn't he? Izuku winced back from the admonishment. He really should never expect anything from it. Sorry, he mumbled as Suzuki-san patched him up and sent him to class with a note. His third period teacher let him in with a scoffed Deku as he took the note, causing Izuku to flinch as he made his way to his seat. At least no one tripped him today. Izuku should not have tested his luck. He couldn't help it, they were talking about quirks in class and he loved quirks. So, of course, he had to start his creepy mumbling habit, rambling on about different quirks. To make matters worse he had rambled about the quirks in his class and had touched on their weaknesses a few times, quickly followed up by ways to improve them. Nevertheless, that was enough to piss off Kakin and his group of friends. Shoving his notebooks and various school supplies haphazardly in his backpack, Izuku fled the classroom in a desperate attempt to evade the bullies, sprinting down the hallway with frantic muttered apologies to people he bumped into. Most of them let him off with a glare or a watch where you're going, Deku, realizing that Kakin was coming after him so they didn't need to spend time putting him in his place themselves. Come on, come on, come on, Izuku thought at his legs as he ducked and weaved through the crowd at the school gates. Just a little further and he could lose Kakin in the crowd of children waiting to be picked up and escape into the alleyways. He almost tripped running through the school gates, pleading to himself that the crowd would be enough to lose the bullies in. DKU. You little shit. Stop running away, you fucking coward. Oh no. He'd really pissed Kakin off today if he was using his quirk to get a bird's eye view. A teacher shouted something about quirk use at him that caused Kakin to drop out of sight, but not before he had spotted Izuku. This was bad. Izuku sprinted out of the crowd, he could hopefully lose. Kakin in the alleyways. He ducked across the street, causing a car to honk at him, damn it. He couldn't even run away, right could he? Useless Deku. Hey Dad, where do you think you're going, huh? Another one of the bullies asked as they grabbed the back of his shirt. Izuku squeaked and managed to slip out of the hold and duck into the alleyway. It didn't work. Long fingers slammed him into the wall seconds later. Thinking you're good enough to try and run now, Deku? They growled again. Shoot, that was one of Kakin's lackeys. What was his name again? Kakin just called him Fingers. Izuku's thoughts cut off as a few new people entered the alleyway. Deku. One of the new voices snarled. Ichichai, Keikakak chan Izuku shakily replied. No one wants your useless ass sprouting off stalker info about their quirk like you're better than them. Fingers smirked with Kakin's proclamation, drawing a new cut along his shoulder. At least it was on his left arm this time. BBB but dash. Don't even think about it, Deku. You're worthless. He punctuated the statement with an explosion to Izuku's stomach. You're nothing more than a pebble on the side of the road. The most you're good for is getting stuck in someone's shoe and being an annoyance. The sentence was finished by slamming Izuka back into the wall so hard his head cracked against it. That's not true. One of the other bullies piped up. Izuku could just make out a brown blur for their head through his tear-filled vision. Someone could decide he's a weird-looking rock and take him home to be part of a collection. Like how people collect trash and broken things. The small gaggle laughed at that. Hear that, Deku? You're so useless that the only reason people care about you is out of pity. At some point, Kakin had let Izuka fall to the ground and every one of the slew of insults being thrown at him was matched with a kick, punch, or quirk-related attack. They were wrong. They had to be wrong. He was going to be a hero. Izuku was going to be a hero. He wasn't useless, he wasn't worthless. Everyone on the chess site thought as much. He wasn't a Deku. They were wrong. Weren't they? <laughs> Shoyuta was having a pretty good day. 
He didn't have to patrol today because he'd taken the day off to celebrate Hitoshi's birthday with him and Hizashi. He'd also managed to make it out of UA before Nezu started cackling over his chess partner. His day wasn't even ruined by Hizashi's last-minute request for him to grab some wrapping paper on his way to the cat cafe where they were all meeting up. Because apparently his idiot husband forgot to wrap Hitoshi's present, and then they didn't have any wrapping paper in the house. Take that. You fucking Deku. Your worthless ass shouldn't be looking down on us. The shout from a nearby alleyway had Shoyuda stopping short. He knew what bullying sounded like. He'd gone through it, bullied for a villain's quirk. It was one of the reasons he'd become a hero, so he'd be damned if he let someone be bullied where he could do something to stop it. Rushing around the corner, he activated his quirk, causing a blonde kid with an explosion quirk to confusedly pause his assault of the green net curled up on the cement. A few kids realized he was the cause of their quirk malfunctions and decked it out of there. The blonde, probably the ringleader, if how some of the other kids gave him glances was anything to go on, had the audacity to growl at him. Shoyuda just reached up towards his capture weapon and quirked an eyebrow at him, causing one of his better friends to frantically drag him from the scene. Hey, hey kid, the green-haired boy squinted up at him, I need you to try to sit up for me. Can you do that? Shoyuda asked as he hurried over to the kid's side, trying to help him upright. The kid's face was covered in bruises, with a split lip and singed hair. He was bleeding from a cut on his left shoulder and the rest of his shirt was ruined from burns, various rips, and a few scratches. His eyes looked unfocused too, probably a concussion. Hey kid, can you look at me for a bit? I'm gonna call 911 and see if you have a concussion, okay? The kid lifted his head to look at Shoyuda, and his eyes focused for a bit in what seemed like recognition. Oh my god, it. the kid gasped words barely intelligible through his likely concussion-induced slurring and fast speaking. Shoyuda blinked. He'd never been recognized out of costume before. His thought train was quickly derailed when the kid dissolved into muttering about his quirk. He didn't catch most of it, but what he could decipher was either stalkerishly accurate or the kid was highly intelligent. Kid, kid, did this guy ever stop muttering? Vigif, focus on me. The kid snapped out of his muttering spree with a jerk, clamping his mouth shut, his head turning back towards Shoyuda. Sorry. The kid whispered. I'm gonna check to see if you have a concussion, the back of your head is bleeding so I'm worried about it, okay? The kid nodded. Let's start with your name. Do you remember your name? Midoriya Izuku. Great Midoriya, can you tell me where you are? Midoriya blinked, glancing around, flinching at the movement. An alleyway? Shoyuda hung his head. No shit problem child. All right, moving on. He held up two fingers with one hand and began to call 119 with the other. How many fingers am I holding up? Three. Yeah, definitely a concussion. All right, now I'm just gonna hold up one finger and I need your gaze to follow it without moving your head, just your eyes. Shoyuda began moving his fingers slowly left to right then up and down as Midoriya failed to consistently follow it with his gaze. As Shoyuda finished the assessment, 119 answered. He quickly relayed the situation and the address to the operator and turned back to Midoriya, who looked like he was trying to run. Midoriya, what are you doing? Shoyuda asked as the kid almost fell over trying to get up. Midoriya's eyes flicked from Shoyuda to the alley entrance. Well, it's nice of you to pretend and all, but I need to get home so I can patch myself up, I'm okay. Really? Midoriya was obviously concentrating on keeping his voice steady and unslurred. To be honest, if Midoriya didn't look beat to shit, Shoyuda might have believed him. That was kind of worrying. Sit back down. You're obviously not fine and I've already called 119. You have several bruised ribs, second degree burns, possible bone fractures, and a severe concussion at worst. And only burns, deep bruises, and a concussion at best. Just the concussion is enough to warrant a trip to the hospital, Midoriya. Midoriya had gone wide-eyed and frightened at his admonishment. Ichich hospital? He stuttered out. Midoriya, show you to side, you need to be treated for your injuries. You can barely stand up and as a hero, I can't let you walk away when you are obviously not fine. Midoriya hung his head and settled back down in the face of Shuda's glare and tone. Okay, he whispered, defeated. 
Shou Yuda nodded at him and began to administer what first aid he could before the ambulance showed up. Luckily Midoriya's injuries weren't that worrying well aside from the concussion. What was worrying however, was his constant insistence that he was okay, or that he could patch himself up. Granted, the kid did have extensive knowledge of how to treat burns, but that did not paint a pretty picture for Shoyuda. It implied that this was not an isolated occurrence. Damn it. Sometimes Shoyuda hated his inquisitive and helpful nature. Because right now, it had led him to catching a ride in the back of an ambulance with his new problem child to do something about the obvious bullying problem Midoriya faced. He snapped out of his reverie when his phone rang with the annoying tune of Starships by Nicki Minaj that Hizashi had set his ringtone back in high school. Shit, he forgot to tell Hizashi and Hitoshi what had happened. Sordash. Shoyuda. What happened? Are you okay? Shoyuda cringed back from the phone, lamenting the fact that he couldn't cancel quirks over the phone. Deactivate your quirk. I'm fine, he huffed. Are you sure? What happened? Yeah, I'm sure. Some work stuff just came up. Don't worry, I still have the wrapping paper. Hizashi chuckled. I'm a bit more worried about you than the wrapping paper right now, kitten. In the background, Shoyuda could make out Hitoshi asking Hizashi if he had forgotten to wrap his present again for the third year in a row. And oh, of course, I didn't. You wound me, Toshi. He's right though, Shoyuda quipped back, his efforts rewarded with an exasperated God damn it pops from Hitoshi. Anyways. Quirk, moving on from the utter betrayal I just received from my own son. You need to be a bit more specific than some work stuff, kitten. I ran into a kid getting bullied in an alleyway. There were multiple counts of illegal quirk use and several things the kid said implied that this is an ongoing problem. So I'm tagging along on his hospital trip to give the police a report and get this incident on the bully's records, Hizashi whistled. The is the kid okay? He'll be okay. He's got several second and first degree burns from a kid with an explosion quirk, a pretty bad concussion, and several other cuts and bruises. Although, I'm more worried about his mental health, to be honest, Shoyuda frowned, when I tried to help him. Hizashi, when I tried to help him, he said it's nice of you to pretend and all, and tried to hide his injuries from me. And the worst thing, he cut off, anger overtaking him. Breath, Shoyuda, it's okay. You turned out fine so did I. We managed to stop the bullying for ourselves and Hitoshi didn't we? We can do it for this kid too. If I hadn't seen him getting beat to hell right in front of me, and if he'd had a bit of time to get his uniform jacket back on, I would have believed him when he said he was fine. That kind of acting skill and pain tolerance doesn't happen overnight. Alright. I get it, I'll admit, I'm a little sad that you couldn't make it. But I understand how this hit too close to home for you to just leave it be. Thanks, Shoyuda said quietly. All right, he could almost hear Hizashi's smile. Hitoshi and I will order some takeout and pick you up from the hospital when you're done. Dad's in the hospital? Hitoshi screeched as Shoyuda heard a shuffling sound from the phone. He guessed Hitoshi had stolen the phone from Hizashi when his voice came through the speaker clearer. Dad, are you okay? I'm fine, Toshi. There was a kid being bullied that I passed on my way to the cafe so I stepped in. There were counts of illegal quirk use and worrying signs from the kid so I tagged along on his hospital trip. He's going to be fine, the worst injury was a concussion, but I need to give his school and the police a report. Oh, Hitoshi's voice sounded smaller, he probably realized why Shoyuda had stepped in and why he was going to the extent of weathering paperwork, his arch nemesis, as Hizashi would say, for a kid he didn't know. Hitoshi, like Shoyuda himself, was bullied for his villain's quirk, so he understood why Shoyuda couldn't let this incident pass without consequences. Okay then. We'll see you when you're done then. Love you. Love you too, Hitoshi. Tell your pops I left him out. I won't, Hitoshi chuckled. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Izuku was woken up when his mom barged into the hospital room sobbing. The doctors had left a little while ago after declaring it okay for him to sleep. Medically at least. Mom apparently had other ideas. Izuku. She sobbed as she saw him sit up. I was so worried, baby. The police called me and said that you got into a fight. And that there was quirk use. And that you were in the hospital. And I was so worried. It's okay, mom. I'm fine. There was a hero who walked in on the fight and stopped it. 
The doctors told me the only reason they want to keep me overnight is my concussion. Mom probably knew everything he was saying already, since the police and doctors had to have contacted her. But if repeating information was what it took to calm her down, Izuku would repeat the information. Are you sure, baby? Mom was looking at him with that same pity and concern she always had. You don't have a quirk to defend yourself with. Why didn't you just run away? Izuku looked away from her. There was. Ever since he'd been diagnosed, Mom had treated him like porcelain and been overprotective to the point that it felt stifling. Luckily, Izuku was saved from having to respond by the door opening again. Hello, Midoriya san, Midoriya kuin. The detective, at least that's what he seemed like, took his hat off and addressed them again. The doctors informed me of your arrival and told me that Midoriya kuin should be lucid enough to answer questions. Don't worry, you won't be in trouble or anything. The hero on the scene made it clear that you were just the victim. Oh, thank you for taking my son's case, detective? Mom replied. Tsukachi. Well, detective Tsukachi, should I be in here when you question Izuku, or should I move outside? Well, that's entirely up to Midoriya Kuen. Tsukachi proceeded to look at him expectantly. Uh, Izuku began, surprised to be put on the spot. He was still a minor, so didn't his mom make all the decisions? Why, yeah, mom can stay. Tsukachi nodded. Let's begin then. Can you tell me what led up to the incident, Midoriya? WL, I was being disruptive in C class with my muttering about my classmates Core KS and Kaken didn't like that. Which meant I should have kept my muttering to myself so he didn't have to remind me of my place. Izuku glanced up at the detective, who was frowning. Oh no, he mentioned a name. Now the detective was going to get mad at him for implicating Kaken as a bully and he was going to get in trouble for ruining Kaken's chance to be a hero. He closed his mouth with a click. He couldn't dump the blame on Kaken when it was his fault for making Kaken think that he thought he was better than him. Well, I don't know who this Kaken is. Would I be right in assuming that they are one of the bullies eraser heads scared away from the scene? Tsukachi asked. Why yes, Izuku whispered the detective would probably just get madder at him if he didn't answer the direct question than if he blamed Kaken a little more. What? Bullies? Mom asked, surprised. But Izuku, Katsuki is your friend. Why would you claim he bullies you? Midoriya-san, were you not informed of the situation your son was found in? Mom blinked at Tsukachi, confused. He sighed and explained the situation. A group of around five classmates of Midoriya Kuen were found beating him up in an alleyway a few blocks from the school. There were several verbal insults thrown about how Midoriya Kuen was looking down on them, nothing but a useless, Deku, and other names such as idiot or worthless. Mom gasped in shock. The children beating him up used their quirks as well. Midoriya Kuen received several second-degree burns from a kid with an explosion quirk and various cuts and bruises from the other kid's quirks and fists. He was also on the receiving end of an attack that left him with a moderate concussion. We think that he was slammed into a wall judging by the smear of blood on the alley wall and by the bleeding wound on the back of his head. Mom was crying again at this point, but Katsuki and Izuku grew up together. And he wants to be a hero. Why would he do this, Izuku? We suspect that the bullying was quirk-based judging by the type of insults used. Izuku flinched away from the statement. Tsukachi, noting his reaction, asked, I just hit the nail on the head there, didn't I? Izuku nodded, silent as the attention turned to him. Ever since, since, I.I. was diagnosed as as q quirkless, Mom gasped. Oh, Izuku baby. Why didn't you tell your teachers? Why didn't you tell me? Izuku hung his head. Mom had always been friends with the Bakugas. He hadn't wanted to ruin her friendship with Mitsuki and Masaru over how their son acted. Besides, Auntie Mitsuki and Uncle Masaru were kinda nice to him. No one thought he could be a hero, but they at least didn't think he was worthless. But his classmates and the teachers, he had told on them. No one ever believed him though, and while some part of him wanted to believe that mom would have done something, would have believed him, would have cared. Another part of him whispered in Kaken's voice about how no one could ever care for a quirkless burden like him. I told the teachers. I.T. tell the nurse every time I go in to see her, he shrunk in on himself, they never believe me. Truth, the detective's voice rang out through the shocked silence. Izuku snuck a glance at mom's slowly morphing face, something about her expression looked almost angry. 
It was probably what he deserved for never telling her. Tsukachi sighed as Izuku ripped his gaze away, filling with guilt. I had honestly hoped that this was just a case of quirk discrimination from peers, but it appears that it extends to the school as well. I'll probably be able to rope the hero who found you into this investigation as well. And I'll need a more in-depth statement at a later date, but for the time being, I think I've stressed you and your mother out enough. With that, Detective Tsukachi stood up and collected his notes. Izuku stared at him, he was going to investigate his school? Just for him? Actually, Izuku stopped for a moment. If the school didn't care what happened to him, would they care what happened to other weak quirked or villain quirked students? Izuku had seen other students like that bullied before, and had always stepped in. He had simply assumed that the teachers never did anything because the bully's attention had switched to him, but what if that wasn't the case? What if they treated the other students just as badly? The detective was definitely smart enough to realize that, so they were just going ahead with the investigation for the case of the other students, he was just the one who brought the problem to their attention. Izuku would probably never even factor in after his initial statement. Thank you, Detective Tsukachi, Mom said as he turned to leave. Her voice sounded strangely cold and controlled, he snuck another glance at her. Her hands were shaking, Izuku had really pissed her off hadn't he? Stupid Deku, always causing problems for other people. Mom shouldn't have to get mad on his behalf. Just my job, Midoriya-san, it was no problem at all. I actually love taking cases like these. It makes me feel good to get at least some justice for the quirk discrimination my old friend went through. As he left, Mom turned to Izuku with a strange look in her eyes. He flinched. This was the first time in years Mom had looked at him without a hint of pity. The look on her face, though, was one he saw in the heroes he analyzed when they were faced with a particularly tough villain. Anger mixed with steel determination. Tell me everything, Mom demanded, her eyes burning with a rare fire. And so he did. Nedza scowled at the screen. It was going on a week now since Small Might had been online. The first few days, he had simply assumed that Small Might was taking a break, despite the fact that they had logged on to the platform every day since they had joined. When their game timed out, Nedza began to worry. Small Might had never let their games time out, especially one that they were likely to win. However, if anyone asked, Nedzu was winning just over half of their games and Small Might had just caught him off guard their first game to win so fast. He wondered what had happened for Small Might to not log on for a week. Was it something family-related? Small Might had offhandedly mentioned that he only had a mother once, so that was unlikely for the sole reason that there weren't as many people for something to happen to. Was it friend-related? Small Might had never mentioned any friends though, which left honestly the most terrifying possibility as the most likely. Something had happened to Small Might himself. Nedzu poured himself a cup of tea as his mind went into overdrive. He had a limited amount of information about Small Might so without them logging on for Nedzu and Power Loader to trace, Everything he could deduce would simply be conjecture. Had Small Might ever said anything about sports? Some sort of arm or brain injury could explain their absence since some doctors recommended against typing with a broken arm and concussions didn't go well with screens. No, they hadn't. But the one time Nedzu had mentioned school they had closed off and shut up. Combined with the fact that they never disclosed their quirk led Nedzu to believe that they experienced some sort of quirk discrimination at school. If so, their quirk was likely weak, mental, or villainous in nature. However, judging by their ashamed actions concerning it, it was most likely villainous. Even weak quirks and mental quirks had their unique niches and use so small might wouldn't be ashamed of them to the extent they seemed to be. Nedzu had simply left the assumption at that the last time he put thought into it. But was it possible the discrimination went past verbal? Was Small Might beat up by his classmates and or teachers to the point that he received an injury along the lines of a broken arm or a concussion? If so, then Small Might's humble nature and utter lack of self-confidence in his intelligence were put into a new light. If teachers and peers were constantly beating him up and putting him down by giving him worse scores and possibly destroying his homework, then his grades would suffer, leading him to be self-deprecating and unconfident in his own intelligence. A quirk that was stereotypically villainous in nature would also explain the possible bullying and their obsession with heroes to a point. 
Small Might had several times espoused an enormous amount of hero trivia that even extended to underground heroes and intelligence heroes such as Nedzu himself. If they had a villainous quirk, Small Might was probably focusing on heroes like themselves with possibly destructive, weak, or villainous quirks and looked up to mainstream heroes like All Might because of their anyone-can-be-a-hero speeches. Having gone through similar discrimination himself as an animal with a quirk, Nedzu could sympathize with Small Might if this was the case. Humans could be especially cruel when it came to quirks. They had this idiotic notion that quirks define someone's future and seemed to have no understanding of the power of determination and commitment. Having experienced this power time and time again with general education students winning sports festivals and seeing its results in present-day heroes, Nedza could say with certainty that that notion was absolute bullshit. Unfortunately, discrimination would never go away, and it would never stop affecting people's lives in harmful ways. Nedza just hoped that it wasn't the case for Small Might. If so, their life was harder than most people could imagine and the encouragement and positive reinforcement they received on the chess site was likely rare outside the safety of the internet. Nedzu cast a forlorn glance at his pile of paperwork. He sighed. It looked like Small Might wasn't logging in today there. Mentally, he penciled in his conjecture on the growing list of things about Small Might he hoped he was wrong about and picked up the first sheet. It looked like it was paperwork again today. He had even more than usual since Aizawa had been enlisted by Tsukachi on that quirk discrimination case a few days ago. Since Nedzu was picking up his paperwork and was the designated sub for when any heroics teacher got called out during school hours the pile was a bit larger than usual. He set the notifications on the chess site to sound and began to work through support item requests for the upcoming sports festival. About an hour or so later, Nedza got the ding that had him guzzling tea and almost shoving papers off his desk in excitement. Small Might had requested a game. <laughs> Izuku smiled slightly as Tevil Genius immediately accepted his game request. It was almost like they had been waiting for him, but he knew better than that. They were probably just bored today or wanted a distraction. While Tevil Genius was someone who he would hesitantly consider a friend, he knew better than to think someone other than his mother would care about him. He had just gotten back from a doctor's visit that cleared him to use screens again, although they gave him a two-hour limit outside of school. Izuka had been happy to know that he could go back to hero forums, news sites, and chess. He had already spent 30 minutes checking through the hero forums and wanted some time to finish up that analysis on Hawks that he had begun before the concussion. So, an hour on the chess site? that would be enough to get fairly far into a new game with Tevil Genius. Although Izuku was a bit sad he had let their old game time out, he had been winning darn it. Tevil Genius. Small Might. Thank you for the new game request. I must say, I was concerned when you let our game time out and went MIA for a week. According to your history, you've logged in every day since you got your account, did something happen? Small Might 001. Oh kinda? I got a concussion so the doctor said I couldn't use screens outside of school is identical to? Is identical to. I'm only gonna be on for an hour today since the doctor is holding me to two hours outside of school. Tevil Genius. Do you have online homework then? Small Might 001. Oh no, nothing like that. I just already used up 30 minutes on looking through hero forums and I want to do a bit more on my Hawks analysis. His quirk is just too cool. Tevil Genius. Do you do quirk analysis? Small Might 001. Oh, it's just a little hobby I have, anyone could do it as well as me. I just find it fun. Tevil Genius. Well if it's anything like your skill at chess and high-level strategic thinking abilities, I'm inclined to doubt that statement. Small Might 001. I'm sure it isn't, but I could show you some if you want. Tevil Genius. While I would love to see it, I feel like you should put a bit more thought into this decision. You know next to nothing about me and your analysis on heroes, I assume it is on heroes, could have the power to take them down if I have ill intentions toward one of the heroes you have analyzed. Small Might 001. That's a good point, but my analysis isn't very good. It's just a fanboy's ramblings. Tevil Genius. Dot as I said earlier, I'm inclined to disagree. However, I also have a proposition. If you capture one of my pieces I will answer a question about myself for each piece and vice versa. Within reason, of course, 
no names or quirks or anything else deemed too personal. Small Might 001. That sounds fun, I agree. Also, I just captured your rook. You mentioned previously that you were a teacher. What level of education do you teach? Tevil Genius. Well, I'm technically a principal, but I substitute homeroom and other classes for all three years of high school. I do regularly give guest speeches on strategic thinking and villain ideology, though. Small Might 001. Ooh, villain ideology sounds really cool, and I probably should have seen the strategic thinking thing coming, seeing how good you are at chess. What school do you teach at that gives students lectures on those topics, though? Tevil Genius. Getting a little ahead of ourselves, are we? Anyways, I do believe it is my turn to ask a question. Seeing as you just lost a pawn. Small Might 001. Oh darn, I'll just write the question down for later. Tevil Genius. How did you get your concussion? Izuku froze, staring at his screen. Why did Tevil Genius want to know that? He had thought they would ask about his analysis. It didn't make any sense. He wasn't concerned about Izuku, was he? Oh gosh, not telling them he was quirkless and tricking Tevil Genius into caring about him wasn't identity impersonation, was it? Could he lie? No, he didn't want to do that. Tevil Genius was one of the few people who cared about him, and he didn't want to invalidate that by lying to them. But did he want to tell a stranger that he was being bullied? Tevil Genius was right when they said he knew little about them, and they were a teacher on top of it. How vague could the answer be? Was there another option? Tevil Genius had said that Izuku could refuse to answer any questions, but would they get mad at him for it? Well, one way to find out. Small Might 001. Different question, please. Tevil Genius. Of course. That I'm sorry for asking that question. I hadn't realized that your concussion was a topic that made you uncomfortable. Do you play any sports? And yes, things like martial arts or gymnastics count. Small Might 001. No, I'm interested in martial arts and parkour, but I haven't found a dojo that will take me in yet. Oh, plus. Oh. I'm always too much of a liability or not a fit for our environment. Sorry for spilling that on you. I've just been irritated about it for a while. Tevil Genius. Not a problem. Also, I do believe that it has been almost an hour since we began playing. Small Might 001. Oh my gosh, it has. Sorry. Oh. One last question since I just took your pawn. Do you have a hero forum account? If so, what is it? Tevil Genius. It's Tevil Genius at Caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Small Might 001. Oh nice, I'm Sir Racer Might at Never Fear From Here. That way you'll know who I am when I follow you. Izuku smiled as he bid Tevil Genius goodbye and opened up the Hawks video. Did this mean he had a friend now? This was further than he'd gotten in the friendship arena since he was four. He still didn't know much about Tevil Genius but what he did know pointed that they were caring and highly intelligent. Although they were a teacher. If Izuku was being perfectly honest though, Tevil Genius' friend's status had been cemented when they accepted that he didn't want to answer the concussion question. Izuku was running for his life. Ever since Detective Tsukachi had opened the case on the bullies and informed them about the charges against them, Kaks Katsuki had been physically bullying him way less. It was probably because Aunt Mitsuki had forced him to stop, but Izuku was grateful anyways. However, the other bullies' reactions had been less than stellar. If anything, there was more bullying now than before Eraserhead had found him getting beat up. Which was why he was currently weaving through the park in the forest to try and lose the group of third years who were blaming him for the new bullying mark on their records. Izuku tripped over a root and face planted into the dirt. Quickly he got up and started running again. If he had managed to get a lead on the bullies before, all that was lost now. He whipped his head around, looking for somewhere to hide, or at least rest a bit after he regained his distance. If he could hide, he could lose them. For Izuku's vast history of avoiding, hiding from, and escaping bullies, a certain measure of situational awareness was just something you learned to survive. That said, up was not usually the direction the bullies came from so Izuku had a bad habit of almost never looking up. Which is why he jumped two feet in the air when the purple-haired kid whisper shouted at him from the tree. Pissed, bush boy. Are those loud third years after you? Tree Boy looked tired, he wasn't wearing the same uniform as Izuku, but it was in a similar shape. Was the Tree Boy also bullied? 
Or was the condition just from climbing trees? Did the purple have to do with his quirk? Probably not. His quirk was likely something to do with sleep or climbing judging by his familiarity with being in a tree and the eye bags. Or he could just have insomnia. Would the insomnia be a side effect of whatever his quirk was? What kind of quirk would have insomnia as a side effect? There weren't really any physical characteristics of his quirk if that wasn't the case, though. Unless Purple had some sort of mutter about my quirk later, Tree Boy cut in. That was all out loud, wasn't it? Tree Boy nodded. It was, now hurry up and let me pull you into the tree if you want to get away from those bullies. Izuka looked at Tree Boy's hand skeptically. People had tried to be nice to him before as a joke. What if Tree Boy was working with the third years? But no, he had a different school uniform, which means he likely didn't know he was corkless. And the beat-up uniform implied a bullying victim like himself. So he could probably trust Tree Boy. Izuku grabbed his hand and braced his feet against the trunk as Tree Boy pulled him into the tree. They could still see us, Izuku observed from the branch he was clinging to. When was the last time he climbed a tree? When he was five. Tree Boy rolled his eyes. That's why we're going higher, Bush Boy. Izuka let out a panicked sound as Tree Boy stepped on a particularly thin branch in his ascent. He glanced back down at Izuku to see him still clinging to the low branch. He sighed, Step where I step and grab where I grab. Keep the branches the same at least, and if you don't feel comfortable with a move, step or hold as close to the trunk as possible. Izuku slowly followed Tree Boy's path up the tree. As much as he wanted to stay down on the safe lower branch, one of the bullies had a quirk that let her generate a whip out of her hand. That would definitely be able to pull him off the lower branch, and it really stung so he'd prefer to avoid being attacked by her again. The higher his perch in the tree, the less likely he was to be seen too, so those arguments counteracted all his objections about safety. It had to be safer than being beaten up after all. Tree Boy stopped on a rather sturdy-looking high branch with another branch right behind it, like a makeshift bench. He slid out away from the trunk and patted the space next to him, looking at Izuku expectantly. Copying Tree Boy's movements had been easier than Izuku had anticipated, so he easily plopped into the seat next to the Tree Boy. They both stayed quiet until the group barged underneath them, screaming Izuku's nickname. Tree Boy had without a doubt been bullied at some point in his life. His innate knowledge and understanding of the situation spoke too much for there to be any other explanation which meant either a weak quirk or a villain quirk, since it obviously wasn't over a mutation. Maybe he was a weak empath? Or could put people to sleep? Or maybe he just didn't need sleep? Tree Boy sighed. You know, when I told you to mutter about my quirk later, I didn't think you would actually take me up on that, Izuka flinched and slammed his mouth shut. Oh no. Now Tree Boy was going to call his muttering stalkerish and creepy and kick him out of the tree and never help him again and Izuka hadn't even gotten his name or managed to thank him and he needed to apologize for his muttering, maybe if he apologized fast enough Tree Boy would let him thank him? I'm so sorry, Izuka cried out, my muttering was really stalkerish and creepy and I'm sorry for theorizing about your quirk, it's just something I do with everyone and I can't really help it when it bleeds into muttering, and oh god I'm just digging missile dash tree boy put a hand over his mouth to shut him up. First off, it wasn't stalkerish about how you muttered over my quirk. What I could catch was pretty observative, and I think you got a few points half right, I couldn't really understand most of it. It was a little creepy how much you can infer about me after one interaction, but how cool it was outweighed its creepiness, Izuku stared at tree boy. Had, had he just said that Izuku's mumblings were cool? Was he hit with some sort of quirk to make him give random compliments to kids he saved from bullying? Was Izuka hit with a quirk that made him hear weird things? Was he hallucinating from another concussion? Izuku's thought train was abruptly cut off by Tree Boy waving a hand in his face. You, Earth to Bush Boy. You okay in there? Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Just, no one's and no one's ever see called my mumbling sea cool before. Yeah, I thought as much. So... Why were those third years after you? We quirk. Izuku froze. Tree Boy had been accepting so far, but would that mean he wouldn't push Izuku away? Uh. And no. Um. M. I am. Um. Q. Q. Quirk. K. Class. Izuku held his breath with closed eyes as he braced for Tree Boy's inevitable rejection. Oh, yeah. That'd make sense. Izuku cracked his eyes open. I was bullied too, 
For slightly different reasons, though, Izuku relaxed slightly, none of the fake friends had ever taken this route with trying to get his trust before, I have what a lot of people consider a villain's quirk, Tree Boy said sheepishly. Izuka frowned, but there's no such thing as a villain's quirk. Any quirk used for villainous activity is villainous and any quirk used for heroic activity is a heroic quirk. Tree Boy, he really needed a name if they were swapping sob stories, stared at him. Wow, he began, I don't think I've ever had someone outside my family tell me that before, Izuka looked down. Well, at least you have people supporting you, Izuku whispered quietly. Tree Boy sighed. So, Bush Boy, I'm guessing your name isn't really Tdeku like those bullies were screaming? Izuku startled. He knew he was quirkless and still wanted to know his name? Did he want to be friends too? Izuka didn't think he would be able to handle that. He hadn't had real life friends since he was four. Oh no it's not. I'm Midoriya Izuku. Tree Boy looked at him, glanced at his hair then back at his face. Midoriya really? Izuku chuckled sheepishly. Yeah, really ironic. But green's just a family gene. What about you? Shinso Hitoshi, tree boy, Shinso, answered. Well, it's nice to meet you, Shinso. Do you mind if I stay up here a bit longer in case the third years come back? I can move if you want to get down. Shinso shook his head. Nah. I'd rather not risk interacting with idiot bullies, even if they won't target me. I think I'll stay up here a bit longer too, the purple-haired boy leaned back on the branch behind him. So, do you have any hobbies? Izuka hesitated, his only real hobbies were chess and quirk analysis. He was a bit hesitant about sharing either of them. But, Shinso hadn't thought his mumbling was creepy, he had even called it cool. Would he judge him for being a fanboy and a quirk enthusiast? A W L. I scroll through Ichiro forums a lot, and I L like theorizing about Q quirks. Shinso snorted. Yeah, I thought as much. You mumbled about my possible quirks instead of getting out of danger and up the tree. Oh yeah, you said I was half right, right? What did I get correct? Shinso hesitated. Oh no, his bullying was quirk based. Definitely some mental villain's quirk. Shinso, I am the last person to judge you for a villain's quirk. Did you not hear what I said earlier? Yeah, just hard, why no? Anyways, my quirk is brainwashing. If I get a verbal response from someone I can control them. But my biological father's quirk was insomnia. He never slept, so I have actual insomnia. Oh, that's so cool. A lot of villains like to monologue, and if you went underground and kept the activation requirements of your quirk a secret it could be really powerful and you could resolve hostage situations in an instant. Does it have to be a verbal response? Or could Simeon just give a physical or mental response to some thing you say or do and do could control them? Can you access the subconscious with the hour quirk? Like memories? Or adrenaline? Oh, that's just so cool. Although if I went to be a probably called Gothi above ground duty unless you can train your quirk to the point where I do need a verbal response or question so it becomes essentially other people's slimy of sight. You? Shinso cut him off. The little bits of that I actually understood sounded really intelligent. So do you think you maybe could repeat that a bit slower? Izuku stared at him. He wanted him to repeat what he said. Also, just checking something, but you aren't afraid of me? Izuku scrunched up his brow. No? Why would I be? Oh, villain quirk, bullying. If you wanted to control me, you had several previous opportunities to do so when you didn't so, no? Shinso sighed. You're too trusting, you know. No, I'm not. None of the previous fake friends have saved me from bullies, been bullied themselves, or shared sob stories right off the bat. So I think I'm pretty justified in trusting you like this. People faked being your friends, to what? Make fun of you? Izuku winced. Yeah, I've gotten pretty good at distinguishing fake friends from genuinely friendly people, so. Shinso looked at him with an expression akin to pity. Izuku looked away ashamed. Well, what was it you were saying about my quirk? Izuku smiled right back, he could talk about quirks. That was easy. Well, I assume you control people through commands after they respond? Shinso nodded. When you control a person, can you command their subconscious? Or just their body? Does commanding something that your quirk can't do snap them out of it? What snaps someone out of your quirk? Later that day, Izuku walked away from the park with one of his first genuine smiles in years and a new contact in his phone. 
Nedzu contemplatively sipped his tea as he considered tracking Small Might. His latest conversation with the fellow chess player had confirmed for him that Small Might at the very least suffered from some sort of discrimination, likely about having a weak quirk or some sort of physical disability. With the liability and not fit for our environment's bits, Nedza could definitely rule out any strong, flashy, or intelligence quirks. Whatever the discrimination was based in, it clearly included a certainly learned mistrust of strangers. This indicated that Small Might must trust him enough to share so much about themselves with him. And Nedzu did not want to shatter that fragile trust. Hacking the chess site to find Small Might would probably shatter it. Which, unfortunately, threw that option out the window. He'd just have to earn Small Might's trust enough for him to share his identity with Nedzu. Shoyuta looked up at the apartment complex in apprehension. How had he let Tsukachi talk him into this again? Oh, that's right, he'd volunteered. He sighed, he'd spent too long with Hizashi if he was letting his feelings influence his actions to this point. But Tsukachi had needed someone to tell the Midoriya family how the bullying case against Aldra was progressing and Shoyuta had been curious about the concussed boy who had recognized him and sprouted out little known information about his quirk. Shoyuta checked the address again and headed up the stairs to the Midoriya's apartment. An older woman with dark green hair opened the door. She smiled at him hesitantly. Hello, are you the hero who found Izuku? Shoyuda nodded. Please come in then. I'm Midoriya Inko, and my son is Midoriya Izuku. He should be home soon. Would you like tea while we wait? Izuku wants to be here for your update on the case, Shoyuda blinked. He hadn't been expecting this much kindness. He really spent too much time with Hizashi. He needed to get out more. Yes, please. I'm Aizawa Shoyuda, by the way, he replied. Midoriya-sen nodded and gestured to the couch. Lavender or green? Have a seat. Green, she nodded and bustled off to the kitchen. While she was gone, Shoyuda took the opportunity to glance around the living room. There were several pictures of her and her son, but it didn't look like there were any that included a husband. Was he absent? Other than that, there were a lot of All Might movies on that bookcase. It wasn't just All Might movies, however, he noticed as he looked closer. There were several Endeavor and Best Genus movies, even a limited edition present Mike movie. Hizashi would get a kick out of that. There were a few documentaries as well, including, to Shuda's astonishment, a history of UA movie that he knew included information about Nedza's imprisonment and experimentation. He was just wondering which ones were chosen by Midoriya-san and which by Midoriya-kun when the door opened. Mom, I'm home. Midoriya Izuku called from the foyer. The greenette wandered into the living room and stopped short with a strangled sound. Right, he had recognized him. Anyone who put that much effort and research into looking up an underground hero was definitely a fanboy, mom. Why is Eraserhead sitting on our couch? Aizawa-san? Midoriya-san asked as she made her way back into the living room, Yuri Eraserhead? She stared at him. Great, both of them knew about him. Yes, I'm Eraserhead. But since I'm out of uniform at the moment, please just call me Aizawa. Midoriya Izuku nodded slowly. A fanboy like him would probably have trouble wrapping his head around that. Well, Aizawa-san. Detective Tsukachi said that you were here to give us an update on the case? Midoriya Inko recovered first, setting the tea down in front of him and sitting in a chair across the coffee table from him. Shoyuda nodded, looking at Midoriya Izuku, still standing shocked at the entrance to the living room. As the hero who saved you from the bullying incident that started all of this, I volunteered. At the Udash, Shoyuda was cut off by another strangled sound from Midoriya-kun. Right, he had probably forgotten that Eraserhead had saved him because of the concussion. Oh my god, Eraserhead saved me from bullies, he whispered. Midoriya-san looked over at him in concern. Izuku, why don't you sit down? Aizawa-san has some important updates on the case against Aldra, you can fanboy later. Right now, we need to listen. Midoriya-kun nodded numbly and moved to sit in the other chair. Shoyuda cleared his throat. At the moment, around 50 students have come forward with complaints about quirk discrimination from the staff and fellow students. Many had scars for evidence and named several graduated students and current students. We have a few ringleader names as well. However, we would still like a list of bullies from you, Midoriya-kun. 
especially since you seem to have borne the brunt of the bullying, according to the other victims. Several stated that you stepped in and told the bullies to stop, at which they turned their attention on to you, Midoriya san gasped. Midoriya kuin swallowed, looking nervous. We can guarantee police protection from bullies if you contribute to the investigation. No, you can't, Midoriya kuin said harshly. Then immediately shrank in on himself. Why do you say that? Shoyuda asked. Midoriya kuin shrank further in on himself at the question. Suddenly, Shoyuda wished he was a lot worse at reading people. They've bullied you more since the investigation started, haven't they? And they're now specifically targeting you since they know you are the reason the investigation started, aren't they? Midoriya Kuen nodded, and Midoriya san looked on the verge of tears. Shoyuda sighed, Could he do anything about this? Aizawa san, since myself and a few other parents have decided to sue Aldera over this, do you think the amount we will receive will be enough to transfer Izuku to a private school? Midoriya san asked. Mom! Midoriya Kuen exclaimed. Shoyuda couldn't tell if he was astonished by her consideration or horrified by the prospect of a new school. Sadly, he shook his head. Unfortunately, these Quirkus views are fairly widespread. I have no doubt you will be able to acquire restraining orders against the bullies and get the marks on their records. But there is less evidence against the school itself. And what evidence there is, is mostly circumstantial and might not result in winning the case against the school. Personally, I think it will be enough for some form of compensation, but I don't think it will be enough to support Midoriya Kuen transferring to a private school. I see, Midoriya Sen slumped in her chair at Shuda's statement. Damn it, why was he so bad at dealing with people? Have you considered online schooling? Midoriya Kuen looked at him curiously. When I was Midoriya Kuen's age, I was in an online school because of how often I hopped around foster homes. I currently teach in a few as well. I can give you a list of some good ones when we're done here. Thank you, Aizawa san. I would appreciate that, Shoyuda nodded and turned to Midoriya Kuen. Now, Midoriya Kuen, I understand if this might be a trigger for you, but all we need is a list of names. <laughs> to be honest, Izuku was still reeling a little. Eraserhead, the Eraserhead, had been the one to save him from the bullies. Eraserhead was helping with the investigation against his school. His second favorite hero had visited his house. Eraserhead had been a lot nicer than Izuku had expected to be honest. But that was probably just his hero persona influencing Izuku's perception of him. Before he had left, he had given mom a list of online schools, a list of helpful therapists, and his personal contact info. He had recommended that Izuku get some therapy for help with bully-related trauma and told mom to text him if there was anything else she had questions about. Izuku was beginning to think he would never get over the fact that he had met his second favorite hero. All Might would always be number one for him. But then his phone buzzed in his pocket. A no number. Hey Bushboy. This is Shinso. From the park? Midoriya Izuku. Hi Shinso. Let me add you to my contacts real quick. Done. Purple tree. So why I am not the best with friend stuff, so I don't really know what to say Aaron. Midoriya Izuku. Yeah, me neither. Do you have a favorite hero? Purple Tree. Uh, you probably won't recognize the name BC. They're an underground hero, but I like Eraserhead. Midoriya Izuku. Oh, what? Eve never met someone else who knew who Eraserhead was. He's my second favorite hero. Purple Tree. You're kidding. This is awesome. Oh, shoot. Dad just got home. GTG Tito. Midoriya Izuku. What do GTG and Titoel mean? Shinso? You still there? Never mind. Nedzu frowned as he scrolled through Small Might's hero forum posts. Hadn't they said that they did hero analysis? Where were the posts of analysis? Even if they didn't think it was that good, they wouldn't keep it to themselves, would they? All they had were some hero fight videos that looked like they had been taken by phone on the scene and some reblogged posts. It had been a few weeks since Small Might and Nedzu had started the question for capture thing and Nedzu had learned a lot about Small Might. They were bullied for one, they'd finally told him how they got the concussion after letting it slip that they were seeing a counselor. So Nedzu was right about that at least. Small Might's hair was green, something that they'd called ironic for some reason, he assumed it was because of their quirk or their name. Small Might had learned a lot about Nedzu too, although Nedzu had made certain to keep what school he taught at and everything about his quirk quiet. 
If Small Might was a fanboy, he was, he'd admitted to having seven different All Might posters, any information about Nedzu's quirk would lead to Small Might finding out who he was. And to be honest, Nedzu was really enjoying their anonymous friendship. Although, Small Might's real-life friend could be a bit annoying at times. Nedzu had met him through the group chat on the Hero Forum that Small Might had created and Purple Tree was nowhere near as smart as Small Might. Although his penchant for pranks rivaled Aizawa's, so he was at least fun in that aspect. Nedzu eyed the move Small Might had just made. At times the pranks could be a bit irritating. Tevil Genius. Who just took over for Small Might? Small Might 001. I did a dumb and asked why Nedzu was Zuku's third favorite hero and he went off on a rant about Nedzu's quirk, hero work, and how underappreciated he is. I give him five minutes before he realizes I took his laptop. Tevil genius. Purple tree. I should have guessed, really? Small might 001. It's actually a really interesting rant, I'm recording it. You like Nedzu, right? I can DM it to you later? Tevil genius. That would be amazing, thank you. Small Might 001. Oh shit. ITH. Slack Koyos Pfiojido Fiasodif Jane Lai Ajazji Valkadi. Tevil Genius. Purple Tree? Small Might 001. I'm so sorry about that. I went off on a mumbling spree and didn't notice that he took my laptop. TT. Tevil Genius. Zuku? Small Might 001. That's it, I'm killing him. Tevil Genius. I will make the necessary funeral preparations. Will you need help hiding the body? Small Might 001. I knew you were a serial killer. Purple warned me, but did I listen? Uh. Tevil Genius. Aside from the revelation that you just killed your best friend, he mentioned that Nedzu was your third favorite hero? Small Might 001. Yeah, but according to Purple, you'll know enough about my reasons soon, so I'm not going to say anything unless you capture one of my pieces. Tevil genius. That is understandable. But would you look at that? There goes your pawn. Small might 001. Degree, degree. Tevil genius. Would you share your analysis of Nedzu's quirk with me? Small might 001. Yeah, I just have to share it on the forum since I can't attach it here. Give me a moment. <laughs> Two geniuses and an insomniac Tarzan. Sir Racer might at never fear from here. Netsu analysis 1.jpg Netsu analysis 2.jpg Netsu analysis 3.jpg These are the pictures of my Netsu analysis from my notebook. I tried to make them focused, but if you can't read them please let me know. Mind Jack at Eraserhead, S number 1 fan. Zuku what the hell? That's like pro level analysis. Is this the rambling stuff you were talking about? Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. But I stand by what Purple said. Have you considered a career in quirk analysis, small might? Sir Racer might at never fear from here. Just call me Zuku. It's easier since someone spilled my nickname. Mind Jack at Eraserhead, s number one fan. Just call me out, why don't you? Sir Racer might at never fear from here. No, I haven't, but that'd be a good backup if my goal falls through. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Your goal? Mind Jack at Eraserhead, s number one fan. He wants to be a hero. Sir Racer might at never fear from here. Have you captured another piece? Toshi. Greater than over equal to less than over equal to. Mind Jack at Eraserhead, s number one fan. I did a dumb. Nedzu smirked at the screen where he had the images open on his computer. Zuka's analysis could use some organization. But aside from that, it was quite high-level analysis. He began to cackle he needed to teach this kid. He had amazing potential and intelligence. Even without knowing his quirk, Nedzu knew Zuku would make an amazing hero. <laughs> Shuda's head slammed into the desk again as Midnight fled her office for the fifteenth time since Nedzu had made his chess friend. He was glad that Nedzu had met someone who could challenge him intellectually. Really? But did he have to cackle about it? Izuku was having a lot of fun having friends for once in his life. A week into being friends with Hitoshi, he had stepped in and told some of his bullies to leave his friend alone. After that, Hitoshi claimed that no one who had stood up to his bullies for him could call him Shinso anymore. 
Izuku had strong-armed him into calling him by his first name as well a few days later. Being friends with Hitoshi was great, he understood. More than mom or Tevil would ever understand. And because he understood, Hitoshi was great to confide in or rely on. He'd been to therapy for it too, and his parents had transferred him to a private school soon afterward. While mom couldn't afford private school for Izuku, the online school had essentially the same effect. They had found one on the list Eraserhead had given them that let him learn at his own pace. Which was really helpful, since apparently without bullies to destroy his homework or bring his grades down anymore, Izuku was really good at school. Online school also gave him a lot more time to hang out with Hitoshi. There was a cat cafe on Hitoshi's way home from school that they liked to hang out at, Hitoshi would bang his head into a table over the math problems while Izuku coaxed him through it. That's where they were today, although it was an English assignment so Hitoshi was breezing through it. The only explanation Izuku had received for why Hitoshi was so good at English was that his pops spoke it, which made sense. Izuku was calmly scrolling through hero forums and taking notes on Blood King's quirk when his phone buzzed. Mm. Hey Izuku! I just got called into the ER since there was a hero injured in a villain fight. I know you were planning on having Hitoshi over today, but unless you can switch to his house, you're gonna have to cancel. Hey, Toshi, Izuku startled his purple-haired friend out of his homework. Mom just got called into hero ER for an emergency so we won't be able to hang out at my place today. Izuku didn't want to put too much pressure on his friend by specifically suggesting hanging out at Hitoshi's house but specifically saying, my place, left that option open for Hitoshi to suggest. Was it manipulative? It was something he'd learned a bit about to verbally resolve bullying incidents. Hitoshi blinked at him. Actually, let me text my pops. We might be able to go to my place today. I know dad doesn't have a late night shift today so we should be fine. He got his phone out and sent a text. Okay, don't worry about it too much if they say no, Izuka stated. Now get back to your homework. I know you procrastinated and that worksheet is due tomorrow, Hitoshi squinted at him. Are you positive you don't have a mind-reading quirk? The due date is written at the top of the worksheet, it was blank when you started it and the date you wrote was for a week ago, Hitoshi scowled at him and opened his mouth to retort when his phone buzzed. Asshole. He left it at, checking his phone as Azuka laughed. Good news, Pops said we could come over. Bad news. After that last betrayal I'm considering taking back my offer, Hitoshi told him, jabbing his phone at him accusingly. No, Toshi you wouldn't. Izuku cried, I'll give you my present mic analysis. Hmm, Hitoshi tapped his chin fake thoughtfully, deal? He said at last with one of his creepy wide smiles. By the way, Pops wants to meet you before his late night radio shift so we should get going soon. We can go after you finish that English assignment? He said, noting how Hitoshi was trying to slip it into his backpack. Damn it, Zuku. Why are you always so perceptive? Years of bullying. Hitoshi flinched and Izuku looked down. He probably shouldn't have said that. Hitoshi had been bullied too. He shouldn't have brought up any bad memories for him. Right, sorry? I'm sorry for joking about it. It's a form of coping, you're fine. Izuku nodded and began cleaning up his notebooks. Tevil had suggested organizing his notes by strengths, weaknesses, improvements, questions, quirk, and fighting style so Izuku had started color-coding his notes. He had to admit, it helped a lot and he had started organizing his thoughts the same way, which was helping his analysis get a bit faster. They spent the rest of their time in the cat cafe in silence. The conversation stalled by bringing up the sore point bullying was for both of them. The short walk to Hitoshi's neighborhood was a bit more exciting, with a conversation about a new hero called Pathfinder. Izuku was mumbling on about how useful their quirk, which could reverse people's directions was, while Hitoshi kept counteracting with points about their personality. Izuku was writing down a reminder to look up some books on psychoanalysis to begin including personality breakdowns in his notes when Hitoshi stopped. This is the complex, Hitoshi informed Izuku after he managed to not crash into Hitoshi. Look, Zuku, I know you're a fanboy but would it be possible for you to like, rein it in a bit and not freak out when you meet my dads? Izuku blinked at Hitoshi confused, until, Hitoshi, are your parents pro-heroes? He squeaked. Hitoshi nodded. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you who, though. I wanna see if you can recognize them. Izuku eyed his smile, 
Were they both underground heroes? Or were they low in the rankings? Izuku was mentally reviewing everything he knew about Hitoshi's parents to try to guess which ones they were. There weren't that many openly gay pro heroes, even less openly married to another pro. Was one of them present Mike? He always mentioned a kitten or favorite listener on his shows, maybe they were his husband and Hitoshi? But Hitoshi didn't act like him much, maybe he took after his other dad more? He had to admit, it made a bit of sense since Hitoshi wasn't the type of person to have present Mike as one of his favorite heroes, he was too big a fan of underground pros. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask, Izuku decided as they boarded the elevator, is one of your dad's present Mike by any chance? Hitoshi whipped his head around to look at him with an astonished noise. What the fuck, Zuku? How the hell? Ah, uh, so he was right. Well, he's openly gay for one. Your parents could be closeted pros, but it made sense to work off a known list. He's never confirmed being married to the media, but he always mentions a kitten or favorite listener on his radio shows. That implies he at least has a significant other. And you don't seem like the kind of person to have present Mike as a favorite hero unless you have some sort of personal stake in it. All of that could have been explained away by other stuff, but it was my best guess. Izuka sneaked a glance at Hitoshi's astonished face. It was mainly a joke though, I'm really surprised that I was correct, Hitoshi sighed. Well, I would ask you to try and guess my other dad, but we're here so just try not to freak out about meeting one of your favorite heroes. Izuku raised an eyebrow at Hitoshi as he unlocked the door. What is your other dad all might? Hitoshi snorted, shoulders shaking as he tried not to laugh so hard he couldn't open the door. Oh my god. And oh Zuku just tell no. My dad, no, just no. After getting the door open, Hitoshi collapsed to the side, laughing his guts out. Izuku chuckled at the scene. I can't believe that's what killed you, Izuku commented stepping over his friend's shaking form into the apartment. A blonde-haired figure stepped around the corner, he wasn't dressed in anything resembling his hero costume and had his hair down. But he was undeniably present Mike. Is Toshi okay? The hero addressed the question at Izuku, but he was probably even less capable of answering that question than Hitoshi. Izuku couldn't do anything but stare at the hero, oh no. He didn't know his name. He wasn't in his hero costume so he wasn't present Mike right now, would he be offended if Izuku used his hero name? Had Hitoshi ever mentioned his parents' names? No, he'd only called the Pops or Dad, which one was present Mike for that matter. Hitoshi had finally stopped laughing and was now gasping on the ground. I'm, I'm fine Pops, he said between heavy breaths. Oh, so present Mike was Pops. Present Mike nodded at the answer. Close the door then. Who is your friend? Izuku let out a strangled sound, oh no, was this going to be a tradition now? Meet one of your favorite heroes, sound like you're dying? This is Midoriya Izuku, he's a little starstruck right now, Hitoshi informed present Mike as he got up and closed the door. Oh, so you're the little listener from the tree. Izuku blinked, what had Hitoshi told his parents about him? You um, why yeah, he managed to stutter out. Hitoshi huffed and shoved Izuku's shoulder. Snap out of it, Zuku. You guessed, didn't you? Present Mike gave Hitoshi a shocked glance. Oh yeah. But guessing and meeting Present Mike are two very different things. Hitoshi rolled his eyes as he took off his shoes and moved into the living room. Just try not to faint when you meet my dad. Izuku decided not to answer that, following Hitoshi's example and removing his shoes. It was probably his fault his best friend had so little faith in him completely justified if he was being honest. Well, present Mike smiled at him, it's nice to meet you Midoriya. I'm Yamada Hizashi. Izuku gave him a little bow. It's n nice to meet you T2, Yamada-san, Yamada laughed. You really don't need to be nervous. We don't judge you for being quirkless, both my husband and I suffered from quirk discrimination so we would be some of the last people to judge you for it, that was not what Izuku had been nervous about at all. But it was nice to hear. He mentally added Yamada and whoever his husband was to the list of people who don't care that I'm corkless. The list was up to six people now. This was great. Would you like anything to drink? I'm afraid I can't stay long since I have to leave soon, but I can bully show Yuda into getting you something. Um, de Izuku asked Yamada, smiled. Of course. Black, green, chamomile or lemon? Green please, 
Yamada glanced at his hair, oh he hadn't meant that to be a joke. Hitoshi snorted from where he was setting up his homework on the coffee table. Izuku resisted the urge to sigh. Toshi, anything? Hitoshi opened his mouth and Izuku cut in. You're never gonna get your homework done if you ask for a sugary drink, he informed him. Fine then, I'll have tea too then. Since Izuku's bullying me out of a soda, Yamada chuckled. Oh I like this kid, you're gonna fit right in, he told Izuku before vanishing out towards what Izuku guessed was the kitchen. Hey, Shoyuda, get out of your sleeping bag. Hitoshi brought a friend over. He has friends? A gruff voice answered, where did he know that voice from? Why ya? Yeah. Why did Yamada's shout just cut off like that? Go say hi before you make them tea, the green bean. Green bean? Wanted green tea and Toshi wants black? Fine, the gruff voice replied. A black-haired man walked out into the living room moments later with a bright yellow sleeping bag slung over their shoulder. Izuka's eyes widened and he almost fell off the couch in surprise. Eraser head? Shoyuda glared at Hizashi as he barged into the kitchen, cutting off the volume of his excited shout. Why ya? Go say hi before you make them tea, huh? Oh, right the conversion between Hitoshi and his new friend. Hitoshi had never brought a friend home before, so the kid was already intriguing. The green bean wanted green tea and Toshi wants black. Fine. He grumbled back, unzipping his yellow sleeping bag. Slinging the gift over his shoulder, he walked out into the living room, seeing Hitoshi sitting at the coffee table setting his homework out with a green-haired boy who turned to look at him with shock evident on his face. Eraser head? The greenette stuttered out, Wait, was that? Problem child? From the bullying? Hitoshi whipped his head away from his homework with a grin. I knew you'd recognize him. Shoyuda sighed. Did the problem child not tell him how they met? Shoyuda decided to disregard his lack of knowledge. How's the bullying situation going problem child? He asked instead, Hitoshi startled, giving him a confused look. A lot be better since I t-transferred to an online school t this semester. Hitoshi was now looking back and forth between them with an incredulous face. Shoyuda started to smile. He loved messing with Hitoshi. Great, I'll go make tea then. Shoyuda headed back into the kitchen as Hitoshi whisper shouted. What the hell, Zuku? You know my dad? Yes? He saved me from bullies? Problem child answered hesitantly. I want to see the night star analysis too. Analysis? That's... Problem child stopped. That's fair. Now get your English homework done. Shoyuda grinned. He saw what Hizashi had meant by liking the kid. Speaking of the blonde idiot, he had five minutes to get out the door if he wanted to get to the radio on time. Esravayat. Shoyuda cut off Hizashi's panicked shout with a glare. Love you, Sho. Gotta go. The aforementioned blonde idiot, now in full hero costume minus the hair, barreled out of the kitchen just as fast as he'd barreled in. Nice to meet you, Green Bean. By favorite listener. The front door closed with a click soon after Hitoshi replied. Bye, Pops. Does, does he usually do that? Problem child asked. He can't tell time for shit. This is an everyday occurrence. Shoyuda informed him just as the kettle whistled. Sighing, he poured the boiling water into the glasses and put tea bags in them. He'd never get the appeal of tea. Hizashi loved the tasteless leaf juice, and Hitoshi liked it although he preferred coffee, like Shoyuda. Walking back out to the living room, Shoyuda witnessed the wonderful sight of his son banging his head on the table, likely over homework with problem child snickering at his pain. Shoyuda sighed and set the mugs down in front of them, glancing at the kid's homework as he did so. Hitoshi was doing math and problem child had a notebook out and it looked like he was going over the notes he'd written. Problem child gave him a concerned glance and then set his notebook down to pick up the mug. Giving the open pages a curious look, Shoyuda froze. Those were not class notes. Near the top of the page was written, The Wisp Hero, Night Star. Below it was a detailed drawing of their hero costume with tiny notations about what Shoyuda assumed were support items or design elements. The writing was a little too tiny for Shoyuda to read upside down, but he'd worked with Night Star on occasion before, the lines pointed to places she had support items. Problem Child seemed to have noticed looking because he perked up. Oh, that's, um, that's the Night Star analysis Titoshi wanted to see, I thought I'd go over it. 
Um, while he finished up homework since I wrote most of this a few months back, show you to blinked, and looked a bit closer at the upside-down writing. Why did the problem child have to have such tiny handwriting? D, do you want to read it? Show you to shrugged, it couldn't hurt? Sure, he replied, grabbing the notebook and scanning the analysis of Night Star's quirk. The next page was fighting style, it seemed, and the third was focused on weaknesses slash improvements, and the last an attempt at psychoanalysis. It was the last page that shocked him, there wasn't a lot about Night Star out there, a few videos, some witness testimonies, maybe an interview or two from some of her more public appearances. But Sho Yuta knew her, and with what little information there was out there about the underground hero, the psychoanalysis should not be as detailed as it was. It was inexperienced and much of it was conjectures, but the vast majority of those conjectures were accurate. It was kinda scary. Sho Yuta reread the quirk, fighting style, and weaknesses slash improvement sections with a closer eye. All three were equally scary accurate, and many of the improvements were truly ingenious. He'd never thought that night stars will o wisps familiars could glow in a different wavelength of light, such as infrared or ultraviolet, thus increasing attack and stealth power. Kid, he began, setting the notebook down on the table, this could be really dangerous if it ended up in the hands of a villain, why isn't it in code? Problem child blinked at him. Code? It's really not that g good. I just r ramble about heroes' q quirks and stuff. Ion only recently started de organizing it. My analysis really isn't t that good. Problem child told him with a sad smile. Problem child, he flinched a bit at the nickname. Hitoshi watched their exchange with interest. At least he'd stopped beating his brain cells out. This is professional level analysis. Beginning level, yes. But if I didn't know you were a middle schooler, I'd think you were at least a college graduate with a degree in court counseling or something similar. But it's just for fun. Problem child trailed off. Told you Tevil was right. Hitoshi cut in. Show you to frown. Tevil? Oh, my sea chess friend. Problem child unhelpfully explained. He s said similar to things a bee about my Nizizu analysis. Problem child curled in on himself, obviously ashamed for whatever reason. Chess friend, huh? Well, this Tevil person is right. This is really good. He glared at Problem Child, and it would be a disaster should it fall into the hands of a villain. I can help you develop a code for it if you want, Shoyuda offered, and Problem Child brightened considerably. Thank you, Izawa san, he cheered. Damn, Izuku, you managed to impress Dad already? I thought it'd at least take a few hours, Hitoshi commented, causing Problem Child to turn red and start spluttering. Wait, what was Problem Child's full name again? Izuka yawned, he'd stayed up rather late last night because Hitoshi had asked him to teach him how to play chess. Aizawa-san had just looked on amusedly as Izuku crushed his son in game after game until Izuku had to head home if he wanted to catch the train. Mom had texted him telling him that she wasn't likely going to be home until early next morning or around midnight, though so Aizawa-san had talked him into staying the night which led to him now, walking into the door of Yamada-san's car before he managed to open it. You good there, Midoriya? Yamada chuckled from the driver's seat, Izuku grumbled at him and managed to not miss the door handle again and actually open the car door this time. He slid into the seat next to a snorting Hitoshi with no more mishaps, he usually got more sleep than this. Just go ahead and laugh, Izuku told Hitoshi, who released his full-on giggles at poor sleep-deprived Izuku's actions. Oh my god, your face. You just, just missed the handle and slammed into the door. Oh my god. Do you think my puppy dog eyes would be good enough to get Yamada-san or Aizawa-san to tell me embarrassing stories about you? Izuku raised an eyebrow at his best friend. You wouldn't, he said, mock hurt. Izuku shrugged. I've heard my puppy dog eyes are pretty effective. Hitoshi grumbled and stopped laughing. Conversation picked up about the differences between online and in-person schools were. Izuku pointed out that he was biased and didn't know much since he was only a couple of months into his second year of middle school and his first year online. Soon they pulled up in front of Izuku's apartment complex. We'll walk you up, Aizawa-san informed him. Oh no, it's okay, you really do don't have to, Izuku tried to explain. Too late. Yamada-san said exuberantly, already getting out of the car which one's yours, Midoriya-kun? Um, 
214, Izuku told the cheerful man hesitantly and led the way toward his apartment. Thank you again for letting me stay the night, PR and Yamada san. Not a problem, little listener. Izuku looked at him curiously. Aizawa san Izuku understood. He didn't like him because he was quirkless and stupid, like with how he hadn't put his notebooks in code. He called him his problem child after all. But Yamada san was really nice and Izuku didn't get it. Hitoshi pushed the button for Izuku's floor when they got in the elevator and Izuku shot him a grateful look as he stepped out and led the group to his door. Mom. I'm home. Hitoshi's parents brought me. Oh. Welcome home, Izuku. Mom walked out to greet them where they were taking off their shoes. Would you like anything to drink? Mom at least had been able to get dressed, but she didn't look like she'd done much else. Her hair was almost as bad a rat's nest as Izuku's at the moment, and that was saying something. Oh, we wouldn't want to get in your way. Midoriyakuin told us that you were up late with an emergency call into the hospital, an injured hero? We just came to make sure he got home okay. Yamada-san informed her as Izuku took his shoes off. Mom smiled. Well, then, at least let me give you my number so that we don't need a third party to communicate next time. Of course. Yamada-san said cheerfully, getting his phone out. My husband said he already had your number? Mom glanced up at the blonde, confusion showing on her face as he said that. Izuku glanced around, noting that Aizawa-san seemed to have stayed in the car. Hitoshi's dad is Eraserhead. Mom, Izuku informed her, she nodded in understanding and handed Yamada-san his phone back. I see, it was nice to meet you Shinsu-san. Oh, Hitoshi's adopted you see, and since we're both pro-heroes he has a different last name. I'm Yamada Hizashi and my husband is Aizawa Shoyuda, mom blinked. I'm sorry for the mess up then. It was nice to meet you Yamada-san. It was wonderful to meet you as well, Midoriya-san. Yamada-san and Hitoshi waved and walked off. Izuku closed the door behind him and turned to his mom. I already ate at Hitoshi so you can go back to sleep. He glanced at her hair, you need it. I can keep myself entertained and make lunch for myself if I need to. Mom slumped and nodded, heading tiredly back to her room. Izuku smiled after her, making his way to his room and opening up his laptop to the chess site. Small Might 001. Hey Tivil. Sorry I wasn't on yesterday. Mom got called into work and I ended up spending the night at Toshi's backslash underscore underscore slash. Tivil genius. Why that's perfectly fine. Pun, how have you been? Small Might 001. I've been great. Asterisk carrot carrot asterisk. Online school has really helped me get better grades since I work at my own pace and don't have any in-person classmates to bully me anymore. It's amazing. Knight, how has the school year gone for you so far? Tivil genius. It's been going as usual for the most part. Although I made a new record of teachers who fell asleep during my orientation, six. However, one of my first-year homeroom teachers has already expelled five students. I thought it would be half his class gone by this point, due to the quirks I saw, so I, unfortunately, lost that bet. Small Might 001. You lost a bet? The great Tiavel Genius lost a bet? Tiavel Genius. I will admit, I am surprised by this outcome. That said, I am quite pleased that it appears I have underestimated our new first years this year. Small Might 001. Wait, wait, wait. This teacher expelling students is. Normal? Tivil genius. Yes, I am the principal of a rather competitive and elite school after all. On that note. Small Might 001. Omega. I got away. Pawn? Can I give you a nickname? I just thought that since you know mine and Toshi's nicknames that it might be a good idea to know yours or to give you one. Tivil's fine but I just thought that it'd be cool. You don't have to answer if you want, I'll just choose a different question, it's fine. Tivil genius. That does seem fair. How about I give you the last syllable of my name and you come up with one for me? Small Might 001. If that's okay with you, Tivil genius. Zuku, I wouldn't have suggested it if I wasn't okay with it. The last syllable of my name is Su. Go wild. Small Might 001. Zu. Zuzu? Zuckin? Zuri? Zucchini? Zuman? Tell you know. How about Zuckin? Tivil genius. I think Zuckin fits. Thank you, Zuku. Small Might 001. 
You're welcome, Zuckin. Oh, asterisk asterisk. <laughs> Tevil genius. Bishop, I noticed you still haven't posted the Nedzu analysis you showed me a few days ago. But Small mite 001. Well, no one really wants to see it. It's just creepy stalker mumbling. Tevil genius. I beg to differ. There are communities in the hero fandom that would be ecstatic to see your analysis, just maybe leave out the bits about improvements and weaknesses. Small Might 001. The psychoanalysis is definitely creepy though. Tevil Genius. I will admit that it can be seen as creepy to some, but that would fall under the weaknesses category and not be posted, would it not? Small Might 001. I guess. Tevil Genius. How about this? Try posting your Nedzu analysis without any information that could be helpful to villains or should really be charged for. If you're worried about backlash, you can even do it anonymously. Also, Principal Nedzu is a hero many people are curious about. Due to his low hero media presence but also a well-known figure due to his tenure as the principal of UA. I think that any well-done analysis of him would take off, especially if you include sections that focus on his hero achievements as well. Small Might 001. Huh, I think I'll post it anonymously, you make a lot of good points. I'll think about posting more depending on how the Nedzu analysis is received. Who knows, it might be fun. Greater than over equal to less than over equal to. Tevil genius. That's the spirit. <laughs> Small Might 001. Underscore. Izuka sat back from the screen with a sigh, switching over to the hero forum and opening a new tab where he wasn't logged in. He stared at the screen for a bit, repeating Zuckin's words in his head. Glancing back at the notebook with his notes, he began typing them up. He organized them by the new categories in his latest notebooks but left out the section on weaknesses, improvements, and psychoanalysis, focusing on his analysis of Nedza's quirk and fighting style. With one last editing look over, Izuku closed his eyes and pressed post. Purple tree. Izuku. Are you seeing this? Toshi? Shouldn't you be in school right now? It is Monday, right? Purple Tree. I was scrolling through hero stuff in English. Anyways, go look at Nedza's account right now. Okay? Izuku groaned as he set aside his laptop, giving one last glance at the history assignment on it. He still had until tomorrow to do it, he'd be fine. Focusing his attention on his phone, he opened the Hero Forum app and quickly went to Nedzu's official account. What the hell? Do I need glasses? Purple tree. I don't think so. That is your analysis, right? The one I posted anonymously. Ondi Principal Nedzu commended me on an incredible analysis of his fighting style and quirk. What the hell? Purple tree. Have you looked through the comments yet? I think I'm gonna die. Looking now, Izuku was on the verge of hyperventilating. His third favorite hero had seen his fanboy rambling analysis and thought it was good. Principal Nedzu, the smartest person in Japan, possibly the world, had called his analysis accurate and incredible. Getting his breathing under control, Izuku started scrolling through the comments. They weren't anything like he expected. People thought his analysis was good enough that he'd been taught by Nedzu himself? Well, that wasn't the only point, several people thought he might have a similar quirk, or be family, but the general consensus was that he'd been taught by Nedzu for his analysis to be so accurate and to be featured on Nedzu's official account. Why do people think I've been taught by Nedzu? The analysis wasn't that good. Anyone could have done what I did? Purple tree. Self-depreciation. It really is that good. Did you see the name some people gave you? Sorry. What is it? Purple Tree. Well, since you also included that bit on his accomplishments and why he's so underappreciated, someone jokingly called you Nedza's personal gremlin as an insult since most people think you're his student. And it caught on. <laughs> Should I apologize to Principal Nedzu for the whole thing about people thinking I'm his student? How would I even do that? Does his official account allow people to DM him? Would he be weirded out if I tried to find his personal account and apologize there? Purple tree. So calm down. My dad and pops teach at UA, remember? Write a letter if you really want to and they can deliver it. I might do that. Thanks for the offer. I need to go reevaluate my entire existence now. Purple tree. 
Don't overthink yourself into a heart attack. I'll try not to. Izuka sat back in his seat. Was his analysis really that good? He'd always considered it just fanboy rambling, but not only Zuckin and Hitoshi thought so too but Principal Nedzu and most of his fans as well. Did that mean it was actually good? Zuckin and Hitoshi could be explained away since they were his friends but could he really explain away an entire niche of the hero fandom and Principal Nedzu? Speaking of Principal Nedzu, he should really write the apology letter. Did he have any paper anywhere? Izuka grabbed some loose paper he rarely used and quickly wrote out a rough draft, pausing at the end. Should he leave it anonymous? No, if Aizawa-san or Yamada-san would be delivering it, it wouldn't be that anonymous anyways. Signing his name, Izuku sat back and looked over at his phone. Why was it buzzing so much? Wait, Zuckin was a big fan of Nedzu, right? Oh shoot, they were probably going crazy right now. Two genius and an insomniac Tarzan. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. At never fear from here. 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 Sir Racer might at never fear from here. I'm here I'm here. Is this about the new Nedzu post? Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Who else read that in All Might's voice? Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Yes, this is about the new Nedzu official post. That is your analysis, is it not? Sir Racer might at never fear from here. One, yes it is, I almost had a panic attack over it a few moments ago. Two, Toshi, I just got your username. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. I am most impressed, Nedzu himself said that it was accurate and impressive. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Sir Racer might at never fear from here. I know. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Are you going to continue posting analysis, since this one got such a good reaction? Sir Racer might at never fear from here. Yeah, I think so. I just want to make a different account for it. This is kinda my fanboy account. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Your username should totally be Nedzu's personal gremlin. Sir Racer might at never fear from here. Toshi. I'm not doing that. Everyone already has those conspiracy theories that I'm Nedzu's student or something because he posted my analysis, I don't want to add fuel to that. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. No, Toshi had a point. Making your username something along the lines of Nedzu's personal gremlin, since that is what you've been named, would be a good idea to capitalize on the hype you've generated. It would likely catapult you into the elite of the hero forum analysis community. Sir Racer might at never fear from here. But I don't want to be presumptuous. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. What does that mean? Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Something tells me he wouldn't mind. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Seriously what does that P word mean? Sir Racer might at never fear from here. This. I can always change my username too. Google it Toshi. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Meanie. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Perfect. I look forward to the chaos you will cause. Izuku sighed. He should have guessed Zuckin was only in it for the entertainment. He probably had a sadistic cackle too. And Izuku had just played right into his hands. Oh well. He pulled his laptop back up to the history assignment. At least someone would be having fun as he flopped in the analysis community. <laughs> Nedza grinned wildly. It had only been a few days since he had encouraged Zuku to make his own analysis account, and it was already taking off. After making a new account under the username of Nedzu's Personal Gremlin, his first posted analysis had been one of the number four pro hero best genist. And it was brilliant. He wondered if he'd known Zuku long enough for him to trust Nedzu. If he asked to meet in person. Although it seemed he was really apologetic about being mistaken for Nedzu's student if his tag of at ice were not Nedzu's student was anything to go by. Oh, the irony. Nedzu let out a chuckle at that. It probably set Midnight off running again. Sometimes he wondered why she just hadn't moved her paperwork entirely to the costume design classroom. A knock sounded on his door a few minutes. Nedzu perked up, what would Aizawa-kun be doing knocking on his door? 
Netzeth thought he'd already turned in all of his paperwork for expelling his class. There were only three students left if he remembered correctly. Had he come to expel the rest? Come in, Aizawa Kuen. He called out cheerfully. The scruffy teacher opened the door and shuffled in, holding, Was that a letter? My son's friend was the one who posted that analysis you shared on your official account. He insisted on writing an apology letter because everyone thought he was your student apparently. Aizawa tossed the letter on his desk. Nedza blinked and smiled. Oh, the irony. He chuckled. I suppose that means he hasn't connected the dots yet. I've wanted to take him on as a student since the first chess game I played with him. Aizawa tripped from where he was making his way out of the office. What? He said. Nedzu tilted his head, still grinning. It was interesting to hear such fear and surprise in the underground hero's voice. He wondered how his statement had caused that. In explanation he opened the letter, and would you look at that, it was signed. Midoriya Izuku. Oh he got the joke about green hair now. Although his laughter seemed to freak Aizawa out more. Izukukun is my chess friend, he plays like me. I was quite intrigued to have discovered this, and even more intrigued when he revealed he didn't have an intelligence or analysis quirk, he grinned up at Aizawa, I was entertaining the idea of figuring out his identity and taking him on as a student when he revealed he was only a first-year middle schooler, and that idea was cemented when I saw his analysis. Quite the interesting boy, no? Aizawa looked pale, was he sick? I see, he commented, and practically fled Nedzu's office. Nedzu hummed in contemplation. That was a bit of an out-of-character reaction for Aizawa, was he really sick? No matter, Nedzu thought as he read the letter from Zuku. He had a name now. Izuku was panicking. All right, that was a bit of an understatement. He was feeling a terrifying combination of ecstaticness and anxiousness. Over the past few weeks with his new analysis account, he'd gained quite the following in the hero analysis community. He really hadn't understood it at first. But then he'd gone and looked at some other analysis accounts. They had so little proof backing up claims and occasionally so plain wrong that Izuku had gagged at some of the claims they made. There were definitely some good ones, they ended up being more popular too, along with conspiracy analysts, which was a whole other can of worms. However, none of that newfound appreciation and fame could have prepared him for waking up to a message in his fanboy account inbox from Nedzu official. No less, he'd claimed to be Zuken, and called him by his real name. So Izuku felt like panicking was justified. Mom should be up by now. It was her off day, but it was around noon by now, he'd spent the last few hours panicking and going through scenarios in his head. She'd be a good second opinion, he decided. Mom. Izuku shot up to shout as she stumbled into the kitchen to make a cup of tea. She was already dressed, but she'd always claimed to never truly wake up before she had her tea. What is it, Izuku? She asked with a yawn. He shoved his laptop in her face as a response. She blinked a few times, reading over the message he had displayed. Midoriya Izuku, I must commend you on your analysis. It was truly impressive, as is the new analysis you have been posting under the username, Nedzu S. Personal Gremlin. I received your apology letter about being mistaken for my student, however, you shouldn't have worried. I am not offended by their ignorant assumptions, if anything it should be a testament to your intelligence. That said, if they knew how well you could play chess, I don't think you would ever be able to get anyone convinced otherwise. If you would be open to the idea, I would like to meet you in person. I am very intrigued by your analysis skills and strategic thinking abilities. It seems your academic skills also measure up to the hype if what you have been telling Toshi and I about your online schooling is true. I have a proposition about further schooling for you, however, the offer is best made in person. I have a cafe that I occasionally frequent a few blocks from UA by the name of the Harvest Moon that we could meet at if you are so inclined. If so, Please contact me so that we may work out the date and time of the meetup. Sincerely, Zuckin. Mom started choking on her tea. Frantically coughing as she reread the message and Izuku hurriedly rushed around to grab some Kleenex to clean up the spilled tea from his laptop. He shoved a roll of paper towels in her arms and placed towels on his keyboard to clean up. Are you okay, Mom? She looked up at Izuku to stare. Is this what I think it is? She asked hesitantly. That's kinda why I asked you to read it, Izuku clarified. Zuken was Principal Nedzu. Holy shit. 
Mom hurriedly set the laptop down on the counter and grabbed him by the shoulders. You, Mom? Izuku, I'm so sorry, she began. Izuku opened his mouth to object to her apologizing yet again about his lack of a quirk. No, no. Hear me out, Izuku. I'm sorry for not believing in you. I went through the foster system, you know that right? Izuku nodded, confused. My mother never died, only my father, but she was quirkless, so she was essentially invisible to the law and wasn't allowed to take care of me. Quirkless people are beaten down on every turn by society, with the amount of discrimination and prejudice you are facing, I simply do not believe it is possible for you to become a hero. If the law won't let a quirkless woman keep her child, why should they let one become a hero? When you were told you were quirkless, I apologize because I felt it was my fault for carrying the quirkless gene. But I am also so sorry for everything, the bullying, the hatred, and the dehumanizing. Izuku, I am so sorry, she was crying by the end of her speech. Izuku could feel his own eyes watering in response. Stupid sympathy crying. Mom, he began, but she held a finger up to stop him. You don't have to forgive me. While I may not have actively crushed your dream, as your bullies did, I never entirely supported it either. Izuku was full on crying now, but Izuku, this chance, with someone as influential as Nedza supporting you, you might be able to prove me wrong. Please don't get your hopes up, because, knowing you, you didn't tell him you were quirkless, but if he does support you, then, mom trailed off, tears flowing down both their faces as Izuku completely broke down. Thank you. He made out through sobs as mom hugged him. This was officially the best day of his life. Prove me wrong, Izuku, she whispered. I will, he whispered back. I will. <laughs> Izuku hesitantly checked his phone for the directions to the cafe Zuckin had directed him. It looked like he turned left here to go under the railroad. He was really nervous. Even though mom had given him a pep talk beforehand, there had been too much crying for it to do much in the way of giving him confidence. He'd thought about texting Toshi about it, but he hadn't wanted to offend mom or give Toshi a heart attack. Zuckin being Nedzu was pretty big after all. Izuka himself still wasn't certain he believed it. He halted, oh my god. Zuckin was Nedzu. He was going to meet Zuckin. He was going to meet Nedzu. Oh god. Izuku screamed into his hands as the realization finally set in. His squealing cut off abruptly as he heard a clanking sound behind him. Whirling around, Izuku spotted some sort of sludge monster emerging from the sewer after tossing away the manhole cover. Oh shit, that's a villain. This is bad. Izuku checked over his shoulder. Could he run? No one was anywhere nearby, shoot. He shot off. If there was one thing he was very good at physical-wise, it was running. Thank you, Bakugu. Get back here, meet suit. The sludge villain bellowed at him as gross sewage tendrils sprung into Izuku's peripheral vision. The tendrils, arms, closed in on him, pulling him back to the villain's main body as he struggled. Not only did they look gross, but they tasted gross as well. Izuku learned as one of them shoved down his throat while he gasped for air, I can't believe he's in town today. No one told me about that, at least you'll be a good invisibility shield, kid. You've got good speed too. Izuku choked on the slime the villain was forcing down his throat. Was this how he died? But he hadn't even met Zuckin yet. Or heard what his offer was. He was going to be a hero but he couldn't even escape a second-rate sludge villain. He groped blindly at the sludge he was slowly being encased in, hands passing through the liquid. Think, Izuku. You're going to be a hero. Don't let it end here. If the body was sludge, were there any spots that were solid? He didn't seem to have a main body, ears? Huh? Izuku frantically jabbed above his head at where he assumed the sludge villain's face was. Stabbing the sludge with his fingers until he poked something solid. He slammed his fist against it and the villain let out a shriek, releasing him so he could catch a breath. He swung his backpack out of the sludge and slammed it into the eye with much better accuracy, causing the villain to drop him fully. Izuku went sprawling a few meters from where the sludge villain was crying and holding its eye. Coughing up the sludge from his lungs he frantically thought. The sludge villain was liquid, meaning it was weak to electricity. What could he use? His backpack just had his analysis notebooks, his wallet, and his phone. Izuku scrambled with the zipper on his bag through his coughing fit, 
he needed to get his phone battery out. He was in bad shape to run and he wouldn't get away without some sort of a head start. Hopefully, the shock from throwing his phone battery at him would give him enough time. He was pretty certain mom would forgive him for it. Ripping the present my case Hitoshi had given him for his last birthday off and fumbling it out, Izuku ready to throw the battery at the villain. Just as a new figure burst out of the sewers behind it. I am here. They shouted. Izuku distantly recognized the voice and the catchphrase as he descended into another coughing fit in surprise, choking up more sludge. Texas smash. Came the next shout, splattering slime across the tunnel walls as Izuku continued coughing out his guts. He could vaguely see the figure collecting the villain in a pair of soda bottles. It kinda looked like he had a pair of antennae, or weird blonde bunny ears. My boy are you alright? The figure boomed. Oh, it's all might, Izuku thought. Oh shit. That's all might. They all am in my TT. Izuku stuttered out. All might laughed. That is me, my boy. All Might patted him on the back and looked at his notebooks, strewn from his bag in his scramble to grab his phone. Do you think you will need a hospital? I noticed you coughing. Did the villain try to drown you? Izuku nodded numbly as All Might grabbed one of his notebooks and flipped it open to an empty page, uncapping a marker and signing it. Holy shit, All Might signed his notebook. P probably, I did not K no H how much is L slime I S T till H have I in M I L lungs, Izuku stuttered nervously. Please head there right away then, young man. I must deliver this villain to justice. Shoving all of his stuff back into his bag, Izuku nodded. He could DM Zuckin that he would be late and why on the way, hopefully he'd understand. He glanced at the villain precariously perched in All Might's cargo pants apprehensively, he did not like their quirk. He frowned at the bottles as All Might made ready to jump, they were going to- All Might! Wait! Izuku shouted at him grabbing his leg in a feeble attempt to hold him down, seeing as he just jumped with Izuku holding on. Young man! What are you doing? Please let go! All Might attempted to push his arms off, Izuku just held tighter as he watched the soda bottles containing the villain fall. I can't let go I'll die! He screamed back. Oh right! All Might stopped trying to shove him off and landed on a nearby rooftop, young man that was very reckless. I need to get this vil dash. It fell. Izuku interrupted him, All Might startled, checking his pants pocket, where there was no longer any slime villain, that's what I was trying to tell you. If you jumped the villain would fall out. Still, that was a very reckless action, young man. You could have gotten seriously hurt should I have let you fall. All Might admonished. I wasn't expecting you to jump with me. Izuku protested. All Might opened his mouth to argue, then closed it. I suppose that's true. He boomed back. Now if you'll excuse me, I must recapture the six dash All Might cut off with a sudden coughing fit and a burst of steam. Izuku stared as the steam cleared and was that? All Might? In tiny form? The All Might? Tiny All Might coughed once more this time spraying blood across his fist. Izuku paled. Was this why All Might appearances had been decreasing recently? He'd suffered an injury? Also, his quirk seemed to be a transformative type quirk instead of the strength enhancer most people thought it was. How bad was it that it limited the time All Might could spend in his power form? It had to be something to do with his lungs if the coughing blood was anything to go by. Maybe it affected his digestive system as well judging by his frail form, it looked like he wasn't eating that well. Or was it some sort of disease that affected his immune system that had acted up recently so that he couldn't use his power form as much and due to that disease, he looked frail in his frail form. You were almost spot on with your first guess, my boy, All Might informed him, shoot, he really been mumbling all of that? All Might lifted his shirt to show off an ugly purple scar on the left side of his stomach, I got this in a villain fight four years ago. It took out my stomach, some of my intestines, and half my left lung. Well, that was all they couldn't heal. You're quite observant, young man. Do you have some sort of analysis quirk by any chance? Four years ago? A toxic chainsaw couldn't have done that though. All Might blinked, dropping the shirt he shook his head. This was from a different villain. The fight wasn't released to the media, so you wouldn't know it. Your analysis quirk is very powerful, young man. I don't have an analysis quirk, Izuku stated. 
I I dash he cut off, taking a deep breath, I'm Q quirkless, he whispered. Oh All Might said, do you dash Izuku cut off, he shouldn't ask All Might his question. He had to catch the villain anyway. But he wanted to know, do you think someone like me, someone quirkless, can be a hero? Izuku stared down at his feet. Stupid, asking All Might outright like that. My boy, All Might began, I'm sorry but no. You saw my injury if there are villains out there who can mortally injure someone as strong as me. Then I don't think a quirkless person can last long in this field. You would do well if you chose a more realistic dream. You do seem fairly intelligent, so if you want to help people you could be a doctor or a policeman. You might even be able to go into support. But I don't think you could ever be a hero. Tears cascaded down his face as his dreams cracked and shattered. Izuku numbly made his way down the staircase after All Might. The blonde hero had left a few minutes before Izuku, leaving him crying on the rooftop with a muttered apology about how he needed to get going after the villain. Had he been more lucid, Izuku might have chewed him out for crushing a kid's dreams and leaving them alone on the rooftop of a tall building. Especially with the suicide rates of corkless people, All Might could be convicted of manslaughter or assisted murder if he jumped. But Izuku didn't so he guessed that meant All Might got off scot-free. Izuku had never put his phone battery back in after the villain encounter, so he didn't bother trying to get back on route. He doubted he could face Zuckin right now anyways. Instead, he wandered until he found street names he recognized, guessing a direction and trying to head home. He had made it to one of his old routes home from middle school when he heard the explosions. Izuku automatically flinched. No amount of therapy or recovery time could ever erase that reaction it seemed. Those explosions were kabakugus after all. Whipping his head around to try and find his tormentor, Izuku frowned. All he could see was some growing crowd near the mall with some sort of green monster thrashing and setting off. Oh no, Izuku whispered as his brain processed the sight. That was the slime monster. The slime monster had kaken. Izuku was shoving his way through the crowd before his mind could form more than an instinctual reaction. Save Kaken. Ran on repeat in his head as he fished the phone battery out of his pocket again. What were the heroes doing? Backdraft was putting out the fires, Death Arms was doing rescue, Kamui Woods was holding back the crowd, and Me Lady was trapped by thin roads. Why weren't they doing anything? Stand back. Kamui Woods shouted as Izuku neared the front of the crowd. We are containing the situation and waiting for a hero with a suitable quirk to arrive. Please do not push the police line. Izuku ignored him. Rushing forward he chucked the phone battery at the slime villain, giving it a small shock. It was nowhere near enough to incapacitate it, but it spazzed and gave Kaken a gasp of fresh air. Distracted from its prey for a moment, the slime villain swung around to find its attacker, just missing seeing Izuku dive behind a pillar. Ducking around the obstruction, he came at the villain from a new angle, one that gave him a clear shot at the non-sludge eyes that were now looking in the wrong direction. Brandishing his notebooks, Izuku threw them as hard as he could directly into the eye of the villain. With a roar of pain, the villain flinched back and released Kaken for a second. But that was all Izuku needed. Throwing the rest of his caution and self-preservation to the wind, he yanked Kaken out of the slime monster's hold. If Izuka didn't know better, he would have said that a look of relief passed over Kaken's face before he shouted at him. What the hell, nerd? Kaken screamed at him. He was attempting to drag a struggling Kaken back towards the police line when the villain regained enough sight to attack again. Dropping Kaken for another notebook, since he would be no help having just been practically strangled to death, Izuku ready to tar. Detroit smash. All Might announced, his uppercut blowing a hole in the cloud above them. Izuku collapsed as the slime villain splattered and rain began falling on the surrounding fires. Izuku starred as Kaken coughed the slime out of his lungs beside him. How had he missed his, I am here? Hey kid. Kamui Woods scolded as the paramedics rushed over. What the hell were you thinking? He asked as a paramedic ushered him over to the ambulances. Uh, Izuku began. Liquid type mutations are vulnerable to electricity and that his eyes weren't liquid? Where was his stutter? Oh, he was in shock, wasn't he? I think I'm in shock, he informed the paramedic numbly as she wrapped a blanket around his shoulders. It's okay, that's to be expected after being involved in a villain attack, 
she informed him as she sat him down on the edge of the ambulance. Do you have a phone? Izuku blinked at her. I threw the battery at the villain to shock it. Kamui Wood sighed as the nurse nodded and patted his head. I'm gonna go get a colleague who has their phone on them then. Can you write down your guardian's contact info for me? Izuku complied with her request, and she walked off. Kamui Woods was still standing in front of him with his arms crossed irritatedly. Do you have any idea what you just did, young man? He demanded. Izuku gulped. As saved K. Kaken? He answered shakily, causing Kamui Woods to put a hand to his face. What you did was recklessly risk your life without a plan in order to save your friend. You could have died. Do you understand me? Your actions were dangerous at best and vigilantism at worst. Do you hear? Izuka flinched back from his words as Backdraft finished praising Kaken's quirk and defensive actions to join in on the scolding. Kamui's right kid, you could get charged for vigilantism for this. Don't do it again. I didn't use a Q-quirk though. Izuka had read the laws on vigilantism a few years back when looking into the laws regarding hero regulations. They were specifically defined as using your quirk without a license, making quirkless people exempt. Kid, that makes your actions even more reckless. If you're gonna fight a villain for your friend, at least use all the tools available to you, Backdraft admonished. I I did it. I used the MIB brain and the page phone and a note book. I did on H have a Q quirk so dash. You're a quirkless? Death arms screamed, spitting the word with disgust and disbelief. The hell? You're suicidal, kid. If All Might hadn't shown up you would have gotten both your friend and you killed. Izuku shrank in on himself as the three pros continued berating him for his actions until the nurse came back with another man holding a phone to his ear. He couldn't even answer it, he was crying so hard. How was it fair that Kaken got praised for property damage and his quirk? How was it fair that poor, weak, useless, quirkless Izuku got scolded for saving his life? Midoriya, that's your name, right? The paramedic interrupted his train of thoughts. Izuku nodded numbly, I need you to breathe with me, okay? In one, two, three, out, one, two, three, she kept counting for him as the man she dragged over with the phone shooed off the pro heroes. Slowly, Izuku's breathing evened out and he managed to stifle his tears. Sorry, he told the paramedic, she smiled. Don't be, it's natural to cry after a traumatic experience. Especially when said traumatic experience is made worse by idiots berating you for your bravery, he couldn't help it, he snorted at her tone. It was kind of funny how much she cared about the quirkless kid who'd almost died. It EW wasn't that be brave, he mumbled. Midoriya, none of the heroes were doing anything before you ran out. And from what I heard, you actually had a plan to defeat the villain. Granted, it was only half-baked from what I gathered but it was more than any of the professional heroes at the scene had. You should be proud of your actions. Kimura-san's right, Midoriya, the man with the phone cut in. On a different note though, are you calm enough to talk to your mother right now? She overheard me chew out the heroes and wants to speak with you. Why yeah, I I think I see Ken, Izuka replied, reaching for the phone. T thank why you, Kimura-san. Don't thank me for doing my job, kiddo. Kimura-san told him as she stood to speak with the other paramedic. H. Hey, Zing. Midoriya Izuku. Oh no. Did those pro heroes really scold you for running in to save someone from a villain when they were doing nothing? Why is? There was a shuffling from the other end of the line. All right, I have a pen and paper now. What were their names? K. Kimui W. Ids, B. Backdraft, and D. D. Death A. Arms. W. I. Well, I'll need their names if I'm going to take them to court for quirk discrimination, won't I? Uh. Izuku shrieked, don't do that. Why not, Izuku? And no, reasons like because I'm quirkless or because they were right won't cut it. My Q-quirklessness is a V-viable argument since it M means you W wouldn't be able T to sway T the J jury. I hate that you're right. It doesn't mean that I can't try though, mom sighed. Since it seems that you already know how reckless your actions were, why don't you tell me why? W.L., the V villain had K. Kaken and I. I. just estetart R. rushing F. forwards B. before I had D. more than a F. few weakness I identified. It had Bakugu? Why, yeah. Uh, it's How about we guilt trip Mitsuki into baking us cookies? Izuka giggled. T. that sounds G. great, mum. 
I think you and need tea to pick em me up first. I'm already on the way, a block or so from the south exit of Mizutafu Mall, right? Why yeah? Alright, I'm a few minutes out. See you soon, Izuku. I see you why soon. <laughs> Nedzu frowned at the clock. It was ten minutes past his and Zuku's agreed meeting time. Had he gotten the address wrong? Had he gotten lost? No, in either instance, Zuku would have communicated with him, which meant something urgent must have come up. Or he forgot his phone, although that seemed rather out of character. Perhaps nervousness about meeting his third favorite hero caused him to act out of character? That seemed plausible, Nedzu concluded as he turned to look at the TV. It was displaying a broadcast about a villain attack near the Muzutafu Mall, he supposed Zuku could have been caught up with that as well. He frowned as they replayed the beginning of the fight. It seemed that a young boy with an explosion quirk had been abducted by the villain. Nedzu sighed as the heroes on site did nothing but assist with evacuation and damage control. Yet another life lost to inadequate strategy and analytical thinking on the part of the pro heroes. He could think of a multitude of ways death arms, backdraft, and Kamui Woods could take down the sludge villain, and at least three for Kamui Woods alone. He shook his head at their incompetence as another figure ran into the screen. Nedzu did a spit take as the green haired figure threw something at the sludge villain that caused it to spaz. Taking that opportunity to duck out of the villain's line of sight and throw something directly into the villain's eye, getting it to release the victim. The small figure, the blonde explosion kid's friend most likely, proceeded to drag the victim out of the villain and halfway back to the police line before the villain regained sight and all might intervened. Nedzu sat back with a smile. It seemed that the future of the heroics industry was definitely brighter than its present. Especially with that green kid's strategic thinking ability and innate knowledge of the laws regarding quirk use, since he had avoided utilizing one to save his friend. Nedzu hoped the boy chose heroics for a future. Common sense was a rarity, particularly among heroes. Returning to his tea as the broadcast continued, Nedzu waited for something from Zuku. It was 15 minutes past their meeting time. Now, perhaps he should call him? Getting his phone out, Nedzu did a double take. Why had Toshi spammed the group chat? Two geniuses and an insomniac Tarzan. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. At never fear from here. So, I saw the news. I saw the sludge villain broadcast. Are you okay? At never fear from here. That was Kakin, wasn't it? You're an idiot, you know. I wouldn't lift a finger for any of my bullies. Zuku, please answer me. At never fear from here. At never fear from here. At never fear from here. Did your phone break in the attack or something? Please let me know you're okay. At never fear from here. Zuku. At never fear from here. Zuku. At never fear from here. Why do you have to be so self-sacrificial? Zuku, please. At never fear from here. Nedzu set his tea down. Zuku had been involved in the attack with the slime villain? Had he been the kid with the explosion quirk? No, the few lines about Kakin suggested that he'd been the one to run out afterward and saved the blonde. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Zuku was the green-haired boy from the slime villain attack? Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Yeah. He ran out to save Kakin too. Damn it. I'm gonna kill him. Why is he so stupid? The pros had it handled. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. No, they didn't. They weren't doing anything but waiting for another pro with a suitable quirk to arrive. Completely ignoring the fact that with a bit of creative thinking, even just one of them could have defeated the villain without injuring the hostage. Well, for death arms it might be a bit of a stretch, but Kamui Woods or Backdraft could have easily done so without him as well. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. But he would have survived until then. He didn't have to risk his life to save his bully. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Does what? Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. The explosion kid matches up with what Zuku told me. About Kakin, his main bully. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Stupid humans, why would anyone ever bully Zuku? He doesn't have an offensive personality. Is it related to his quirk? Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. That's Zuku's story. But yes. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. 
opposite. Mind Jacket Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. I'm a bit more worried why he was even so far from his neighborhood in the first place. That mall is near his old middle school, he hates going near there. Especially around when school gets out. Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. I'm afraid I may have been the reason for that. Was I aware that his route would take him past a reminder of a sore point in his past? I would have changed our meeting place. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. You were meeting him today? Tevil genius at caffeinated Earl Grey because fuck you. Mind Jack at Eraserhead's hashtag one fan. Well, if Zuka trusted you enough to meet him in person then he probably wouldn't mind me giving you his address. I was going to make dad drive me there as soon as he gets home anyways. Text me any updates please. Nedzu had paid his bill and was in his car before Toshi's text with Zuku's address could finish sending. Shoyuta was not worried. He was admittedly concerned. After all, Hitoshi's first words to Hisashi and him after they got home had been Nizuku was in a villain attack and isn't answering his phone, get back in the car. But he was not worried about the problem child. Izuku could take care of himself, he thought fast on his feet and was highly intelligent. He could take care of himself. But that knowledge did nothing to alleviate his concern, and did nothing for Hisashi's concern either, seeing as he'd broken at least three traffic laws in the first five minutes of the drive. Zashi, calm down. Problem child's probably fine, just broke his phone or something, he frowned, speaking of phones, wait, Toshi, how'd you find out he was in a villain attack if he's not communicating? News footage. It was the slime villain, he ran out to save the explosion kid when the pros stood there without doing anything, Shoyuta winced, finding out from the news was the worst. Izashi frowned. The slime villain attack was by the mall though? Namuri mentioned that it shut down her favorite makeup shop for a couple of hours before we left? What was he doing all the way out there? The mall? Wasn't that by Izuku's old school too? He was meeting up with Zuken, apparently. Zuken checked the group chat when I was spamming it for Izuku. I gave him Izuku's address, he should beat us there. Are you sure that was okay? Inko won't know him, Hisashi questioned, rolling a stop sign. Izuku tells his mom everything. It'll be fine, Shoyuda grunted in disagreement. If you say so, <laughs> Netsu knocked on the door of the Midoriya's apartment, ten minutes after he left the cafe. He hadn't broken any traffic laws to get there, unlike some of his co-workers might have in his place. Present Mike he knew would have sped the entire way. A short, by human standards, she still towered over him, green-haired woman opened the door hesitantly. Blinking confusedly at the empty space at her head height until she looked down. Oh, she exclaimed, are you Zuckin? She asked Nedzu's smile widened. That's me. He chirped, please call me Nedzu. I assume you would be Midoriya Izuku's mother then? He inquired as the woman opened the door further. Yes, she said, I'm Midoriya Inko. It's a pleasure to meet someone who had such a large role in helping my son come out of his shell. Nedzu waved her off. He's a bright and friendly boy, I'm sure I had less of a role than you assume. Midoriya-san frowned, then smiled, her expression sad. If anything, I'm underestimating your involvement. She informed him, after carefully examining her expression, Nedzu nodded, the sadness she was giving out convinced him. The bullying seemed to have run deeper than he had originally assessed, he concluded. Contrary to popular belief, Nedzu had an incredible understanding of emotions, he just had trouble expressing them in ways that humans could understand, he was an intelligent animal after all. He didn't have a human face, but had a much better nose than most humans, and that sense of smell let him comprehend what emotions others were feeling far better than by simply reading their facial expressions. On a different topic, Nedzu said as he removed his shoes, how is Zuka doing? Since he was not sent to the hospital, I assume that he had no overly adverse physical injuries? Midoriyasen shook her head. No, he had a bit of a sprained ankle from stumbling on the rubble, but that was the most debilitating injury he suffered. Nedzu looked at the woman in surprise, she talked like she worked in the medical field. I see, do you happen to work in the medical field by any chance? She looked shocked at Nedzu's question. I do, I'm an ER nurse at the local hospital. How did you? Nedzu smiled. 
The terminology and way you talked seemed like someone who had experience with his particular types of injuries and this experience in the medical field, Midoriyasen laughed. Well, I guess they call you the smartest pro hero for a reason. She clapped her hands. I made Azuka change and take a shower when he got home, he should be done soon. Would you like anything to drink in the meantime? I have tea. She offered. Nedzu's grin widened. I would love some tea, green if you have it. She nodded and left for the kitchen after gesturing at the couch. Nedzu glanced around the living room she had left him in. All in all, it was rather expected, both Zuku and his mother seemed to be hero fans, judging by the overabundance of hero-themed movies. The furniture seemed comfortably worn, and the pictures hung on the walls showed a happy family of two. Nedzu frowned slightly at that. Where was Zuku's father? At least Zuka seemed happy with whoever he was absent from his life. Nedzu noted that Zuka's mother's smile seemed strained in some of the earlier photos. Speaking of the earlier photos, there didn't seem to be any from when Zuku was younger than four or so. Nedzu's frown deepened at that observation. The bullying and prejudice were definitely quirk-related and likely ran deeper than he had originally suspected. As if, Nedzu's thoughts on his predicament had summoned him, Midoriya Izuku strode into the living room, hair still wet. The boy froze when he spotted Nedzu on the couch, letting out a strangled sound then turning pink in embarrassment. Oh no, Zuka said as he hung his head, it's really going to be a trend, he muttered to himself. Nedzu chortled a little at that. What is going to become a trend, Zuku? Nedzu asked, then as the boy startled from the use of his nickname, Nedzu amended his statement, or would you prefer Midoriya-kun? No, 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 Zuku is fine, Izuku corrected with frantic waves of his hand. Just still a bit shocking that my chess friend is the principal Nedzu. Nedzu nodded, seeing someone as nothing more than a public persona could create disconnects in understanding about their personality and run the risk of being caught up in the media storyline. It got worse if they also knew the public persona's personal identity, which could cause difficulty to see them as the same. Person. Never meet your heroes and all that, Nedzu thought. I understand, connecting my public persona with my demeanor and personality as Zuckin can be complicated. If it helps, the chess friend you knew is a more accurate portrayal of who I am than the role I play for the media, Nedzu informed the greenette with a smile. The boy nodded slowly and moved over the chair across the coffee table from Nedzu, that said, you never answered my original question. Izuka blinked, gears in his head visibly reviewing their conversation. Oh, I always end up making some sort of strangled sound instead of actually talking to heroes I've looked up to when I meet them. I did it with Eraserhead and Present Mike when I met them too. He laughed sheepishly. Nedzu looked at him curiously. You've met Present Mike and Eraserhead? Nedzu asked curiously as a teapot whistled in the kitchen. Izuku glanced in the direction of the kitchen before answering. Well, yeah, they teach at UA, right? He asked before leaning back. Hey mom, if there's extra water, can I have lavender tea? There was a muffled response from Midoriya-san about how she made sure there was enough water for all of them. Nedzu hummed in consideration. May I assume that Toshi refers to Shinso Hitoshi then? How did you never mind, Izuku replied with a sigh. They probably told you about him as an explanation for leaving earlier from work or decreased patrol hours. But yes, Toshi's Aizawa and Yamada's son. Oh, thanks, Mom. Nedzu smiled at Midoriya-san in thanks as she set down tea for the three of them. Thank you, Midoriya-san, Izuku, and I were just talking about his friend, Toshi. Do you happen to be good friends with the Aizawa Yamadas? Midoriya-san nodded. First of all, Inko is fine. And yes, I am friends with them. We've started hanging out because Izuku and Hitoshi became such good friends, but I admittedly haven't known them long, Nedzu nodded. I see, he paused, glancing at Izuku. Did you happen to tell Toshi who I was by any chance? Izuku shook his head as he blew on his tea. Well, it will be a pleasant surprise then. Inko-san tilted her head, glancing between her son, who was staring at him as he pieced it together, and at Nedzu. They're coming to check on Izuku after the villain attack, aren't they? Izuka mentioned once that the three of you have a group chat, that's how you got our address, wasn't it? Nedza smiled. Indeed it was. I see where Zuku got his analysis skills from. Inko-san hid her face in her teacup from Nedzu's compliment. 
I certainly hope so, although he seems to be more intelligent than me, however. If I didn't know better I'd say it was his quirk, Inko-san froze the moment the words left her mouth, glancing at her son, who had paled considerably. Nedzu tilted his head, what an interesting reaction. Ah yes, Zuka's quirk. I will admit I am rather curious about it, it is a stereotypical villainous quirk, no? I had inferred something along those lines from your responses to my inquiry and the bullying problem you mentioned, Izuka seemed to shrink in on himself, have no fear, I will not judge you for your quirk. Several students I personally knew and many current and former teachers at UA have had villainous quirks and I will never judge them or you for anything like that, Izuka seemed to shrink even further in on himself and his mother began looking at him in concern. Izuku, she began, only to trail off with a deep breath, it's okay honey, do you want me to tell him? Izuku shook his head at her and collected himself. Nedzu watched the interaction with curiosity, it was a justified reaction, especially if he had been bullied before for his quirk. But why did Nedzu get the feeling there was something more to it? Zizuken, I did not have a v villain noose Q quirk. I wish I I did honestly, t then I'd a to least have a something. B but I don't, Nedzu connected the dots as Izuku trained his blurry green eyes on him, I'm quirkless. The words seemed to echo around the living room with a sense of finality. Inko-san glanced between Izuku and Nedzu with concern that morphed into thinly veiled hostility as the silence stretched. Izuku looked down in shame as Nedzu turned the revelation over in his mind. He hadn't even considered this possibility, he was surprised, and that almost never happened. While quirkless people made up 20% of Japan's population, almost 75% of that fraction were older than 60. As quirks evolved, quirkless people became rarer, the percent of Izuku's generation born quirkless was probably more around 5% in Japan. And even then, quirk discrimination and bullying ran rampant. They weren't protected by the law. And the vast majority would never live to adulthood either, be it because of hate crimes, suicide, homelessness or starvation, or simply being seen as an easy target by villains. I will admit I find that hard to believe, Nedza began, not because of any prejudice on my part, but because of all the adversity you had to face to make it this far with your dreams intact, Izuka looked up in shock, the percentage of people in your generation who are born quirkless is minuscule, even then, people like you face endless prejudice, bullying and are constantly ignored by the law. As far as I can infer from the data, only about half of your generation of quirkless people will even reach high school. You are truly incredible to not only have made it this far but to have made it this far with your goal of being a hero and an advocate intact. Nedzu paused to sip his tea as the Midoriyas stared at him in shock. And I will admit, the world is in desperate need of someone like you as a hero, Izuku. But it will be like scaling MT Everest every step of the way. Do you think you could do that? Izuka's eyes began to tear up, but a steely determination shone through his expression. Yes, I fought to get this far. And I'm not giving up now, Nedza smiled and finished his tea. Then, Midoriya Izuku, I believe that you can be a hero. And I would like to help you get there. Mom broke down crying as Zuken told Izuku he could be a hero. He couldn't even comfort her, he was so stunned by what Zuken had told him. He could be a hero? Did that mean All Might was wrong? Only hours earlier, he had felt his dreams flicker out when the exact opposite of Zuken's, Nedzu's, proclamation had been said to his face. But now, that ember left over from the windstorm that was All Might's words was slowly kindling back to life. You think I can be a Ichiro? Izuku whispered, Nedzu, oh god. Nedzu was telling him he could be a hero, nodded in affirmation. Izuku broke down crying. It was all just too much, wb. He stuttered out between sobs. Nedzu smiled at him, Zuken shining through his hero persona that he'd adopted to encourage Izuku. Well, do you want the list alphabetically? Or personalized? Izuku gave a half shrug and managed to get something that sounded vaguely like, I don't care out through his sobs. All right then. How about I use this evening's villain encounter as an example? None of the heroes at the scene were doing anything. When I saw the broadcast and which heroes were present, my first thought was, Another casualty lost to the inability of pro heroes to think in death about something other than their media portrayal. With only knowing which heroes were present, I could think of a multitude of ways that they could have saved the explosion boy. 
even for backdraft alone, I could think of at least three ideas. And that was all using their quirks. I never even stopped to consider what a quirkless person could do against that villain with no support items, limited training, and limited resources. Yet, you ran out with nothing but a phone battery and a bag of notebooks, and you saved that boy. You did more than any of those heroes there, barring all might, even tried to do. That's the kind of strategic thinking ability and resourcefulness that we need in this industry. Support items can easily make up for your lack of a quirk and your intelligence serves as a versatile fallback in the absence of those. So long as you receive extensive hand-to-hand -hand weapons and parkour training, I see no reason why you cannot be a competent hero. Izuku was full-blown sobbing by the end of Zuckin's speech and mom was stuttering out thanks between hiccuping sobs. Zuckin tilted his head and donned what Izuku assumed was a sad smile. It was hard to read his non-human face. I take it you haven't heard that much, have you? He, he hasn't really, mom explained. Even I didn't. I still don't fully support his dream of being a hero. I still really wish he'd choose something safer. But my mother was quirkless, so a very loud part of me is also telling him to go prove all those bastards who looked down on her and Izuku wrong. She finished with a tear-filled chuckle, but it's been his dream forever, even if I don't support it fully, I'm his mother. I can't not believe in him and accept his goals. She smiled sweetly at Nedzu's confused tilt of his head. It's a parent thing. I see. He nodded in understanding. You said it's been his dream forever? Izuku started drying his tears off as Zuckin changed the topic. As in, even in childhood he wanted to be a hero? Mom nodded. Yeah, he was really inspired by All Might's debut, but he's expanded since then to idolize other heroes. You're actually his third favorite hero, you know? I do. I'm disappointed he ranks Aizawa over me, Izuku snorted. I'm also impressed he's held onto that dream for so long. Mom smiled. Izuku felt a chill go down his back. He knew that smile. He had ansies of all might and other heroes, you know? I'm certain he had one of you that I made for his third birthday. I'm pretty certain I have a picture of it somewhere if you want to see it. Uh. Izuku shrieked. He could not let Zuckin see his baby pictures. That was a no-go. But even as he raced after her while she went to get the photo album with Zuckin cackling behind them, he couldn't help but appreciate the change in topic. While Zuckin had patched up his sinking ship, All Might's words were still fresh and the topic of him and heroics still hurt. <laughs> Shut up and drive legally, Zashi. You just rolled a stop sign. Miraculously, they made it the rest of the way without getting pulled over, although not for lack of trying on Hizashi's part. Hitoshi was up and out of the car as soon as Hizashi put it in park, Shoyuta jumping out right after him. Damn problem child. Sho. Toshi. Wait up. The two of them quickly left Hizashi behind as he fumbled with the car, dashing up the stairs. Hitoshi skidded to a stop in front of the Midoriya's door, at least he had the decency to wait for Shoyuta before knocking. A few moments later, Izuku himself opened the door with a surprised voice. Toshi! What are dashed? Hitoshi cut him off with a hug. Ok, Izuku stuttered out, shooting Shoyuta a helpless look. Shoyuta ignored it. You alright, problem child? Yes? Why wouldn't I be? You attacked a villain, Zuku, Hitoshi answered, causing Izuku's face to go through an interesting series of expressions before he sighed. Yeah, I guess I can't really argue that point, he admitted causing Shoyuta to snort? At least you realize that, problem child? I'm really not Dash. You fought a villain, thus, problem child, Izuka huffed, shoving Hitoshi off of him. I'm okay, you can stop it, he said to Hitoshi's pleading look. Anyways, Zuckin got here about ten minutes before you and mom got out the baby pictures, you've been warned. Zash you'll be happy, Shoyuta mumbled, causing Izuku to blink and look around. Hizashi-san is here? He asked skeptically, right as a panting Hizashi sprinted around the corner, Oh, why are you guys so fast? I had to lock up the car. Don't just run off without me. He cried as Shoyuta erased his quirk. Hitoshi was worried about problem child, and I wasn't about to let him run off alone, Shoyuta answered with a raised brow. Hizashi opened his mouth to argue, then closed it. Damn it, I hate when you're right. Izuku, you okay? I'm fine. Mom is showing Zuckin baby pictures. Hizashi shrieked with excitement and rushed past Izuku the moment he stepped aside. Take your shoes off and don't freak out. 
Shoyuda frowned as he followed Hizashi. Don't freak out? Shoyuda asked the greenette, who rubbed his head sheepishly. You'll see, Izuku answered ominously as Hizashi rushed into the living room. Only to shriek like a banshee. Startling, Shoyuda glanced at Hitoshi, who looked just as shocked as him, then rushed into the living room. Looking around for an assailant, or a bug, Shoyuda didn't see anything off. Hizashi was standing a few feet past the entrance, looking like his ghost had just left his body. Hitoshi tripped into him soon after entering, none of the pictures were off, and there were no bugs. Inko had a picture book laid out on the coffee table and was showing it off to- Wait what? Problem child, what the fuck? Izuku grinned happily. Oh, I see you guys met Zuken. He chirped cheerfully. Izuku, what the fuck? Hitoshi exclaimed from where Hizashi was helping him up. That's Principal Nedzu. Izuku, the damn problem child, tilted his head with a confused expression on his face. Shoyuda saw right through it, he was definitely laughing at them. And? Shoyuda pinched the bridge of his nose. And that might have been good to know before we came here expecting to find anyone but Principal Nedzu here with you. Izuka finally seemed to burst, doubling over with laughter as the principal cackled into his tea. Even Inko, the traitor, chuckled at his family's reactions. Shoyuda sighed at the sight, then froze. Hitoshi had said that Izuku and Zuken had met on a chess site. Oh my god, you're the chess friend, Hizashi beat him to it. Did you know that every time Nedzu played you he would cackle so creepily that he scared all of the teachers but Shoyuda? Problem child, you've been upgraded to chaos child. I can't believe you're the fucking chess friend. Nedzu just kept cackling and Hizashi was banging his head on a wall while Hitoshi looked like the world had just ended. Esasasorum, the damn chaos child stuttered out through his laughter. Why are our weak CC tie-ins WW is so f funny? Izuku is right. You should see your faces right now, Inko commented. You're such a traitor, Inko Chitoshi told her. She just smiled and gestured to the photo albums before her. Peace offering? She tried. Hizashi rushed over with an excited squeal. Baby pictures? He cried as Shoyuda erased his quirk. Get better control of your quirk, Zashi, he admonished as he headed over to the album. Said blonde husband continued squealing and cooing over the photos of the baby chaos child in various hero onesies. All Might was a bit overrepresented in his opinion, but that could have just been because of the random All Might stickers covering up a person in various photos. He looked up at Inko, confused. Yes, I had been meaning to ask about that. Nedzu cut in as he noticed his reaction. I assume that the All Might stickers are covering up your husband? Might I ask what terms you parted on, if you have cut, or rather, stickered him out of your past? Inko pursed her lips as the attention was directed at her. He left us when Izuku was diagnosed as corkless. Just a note and divorce papers a week after the doctor's appointment. Shoyuda scowled as he exchanged a glance with Hizashi. That wasn't something a responsible father did. I see, Nedza said, wearing that sadistic smile of his that he always donned when he was about to screw someone's life over. Would you mind telling me his name? Inko Midoriya was a smart woman, it seemed. So long as you don't do anything to him, he still sends child support? Nedzu reluctantly nodded. Akatani Hisashi, we changed our names back to Midoriya after he left. At least he still sends money, Hisashi scoffed. What kind of father leaves his wife and child behind because the kid didn't develop a quirk? Him, apparently, Inko answered with a glance at where Izuku had dragged Hitoshi off. I managed to get a no-contact clause into the divorce at least. I don't want him coming back. Shoyuda gave a proud nod. Good idea. Especially if Izuka becomes a hero through UA. The sports festival is aired nationally. Hizashi and Nedzu nodded along with him. We're gonna introduce you to Namuri, Hizashi told her. That's a terrible idea. Shoyuda shut him down. No it isn't. She's been complaining about not having any girlfriends. Inko needs more friends than us since she cut that Bakugu brat's parents out of her life, and they're both workaholics. Hizashi argued. They do seem like they would be good friends, Nedzu interjected with a smile at Inko. She's the pro-hero Midnight, but she's much nicer than her hero persona would indicate. However, in the end, that decision would be best left to Inko-san, would it not? Inko smiled at Hizashi and him. If she's your friend, then I don't think there will be a problem. If Shuda-san can handle her then I can too. 
Besides, you're spot on that I need more friends. Tears began to glisten in the corners of her eyes, damn Midoriya crying. Would you like some tea while you're here? I have a few more albums if you want to look through them too. Hizashi grinned back at her. That'd be great. The next time you're over at our place, we'll show you Toshi's too, okay? That's a deal. Inko responded as she moved to the kitchen to make tea. Izuku stood with her, shooting a nervous glance at Hitoshi. Setting his face into a caricature of determined, he marched up to Shuda's kid and announced, I need to tell you something, before dragging Shuda's purple-haired son behind him towards his room. Izuku closed the door behind them after dragging Hitoshi to his room. The purple-haired boy gave him a curious look as he glanced around. So, he began, Am I going to get any explanation for why you dragged me off other than, I need to tell you something? Because that sounds like a confession. His eyes narrowed. Is this a confession? Izuku started waving his hands frantically. No, 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 no. Why would you actually, that would make sense with what I said. But no, it's, it's something else. He trailed off as his eyes caught on the All Might poster hung above his desk. I don't think you could ever be a hero. Something else? Hitoshi questioned as he followed Izuku's gaze. Yeah, just, he took a deep breath. I met All Might. Hitoshi's eyes widened. No way. His expression morphed into shock. Izuku, that's Oz, why don't you look excited? Izuku flinched. I asked him if I could be a hero. He told Hitoshi as his gaze fell to his shoes. He said no. Hitoshi let the silence stretch as Izuku kept analyzing how his shoes looked. How much of your All Might merch here isn't collector's edition or limited edition? He asked finally. You? Izuku looked up, confused. Most of it? Hitoshi nodded. Pointed out, we're gonna burn it? Hitoshi, no. Izuku's friend turned around with a grin on his face. Hitoshi, yes. Izuku groaned and put his head in his hands at Hitoshi's response. Hitoshi, we're not burning my All Might merch. Izuku shrieked. Can we at least take it down? I doubt you like seeing his face right now. The words just keep running through your head, don't they? Izuku flinched. Yeah, he admitted as he cast a sad glance at his action figure collection. He had a present mic and eraser head action figure up on a pedestal. He should probably add a Nedza figure up there too. It's okay though, Zuckin made sure I knew otherwise. He offered to help me too. Hitoshi raised an eyebrow at that. While that's real impressive and you're definitely telling me more about that later, can you get me a step ladder? Izuka jumped. Some of his posters were pretty high up, weren't they? Yeah. 30 minutes and approximately 13 All Might posters, 37 action figures, 22 stuffies, 2 pillowcases, and a bedspread later, almost everything All Might was gone from Midoriya Izuku's room. Izuku furrowed his brow at the last poster. He'd had it since he was seven. A collector's edition Silver Age All Might poster, made even rarer by the large signature in the corner. He'd gotten it signed at a con that mom had gotten tickets to for his birthday. He was also pretty certain she was celebrating her divorce with Hisashi as well, looking back on it. Izuku had kept it framed and hung above his desk, it had been a staple of his room for so long that he couldn't imagine putting it away. Besides, just because All Might was apparently corkist, didn't negate the fact that he was an amazing hero. I don't think you could ever be a hero. Izuku. Hitoshi asked him, breaking him out of his thoughts. Izuku glanced up at his purple-haired friend, catching sight of the walls of his room as he did so. They looked so empty now, without the All Might merch. There was other heroes' merch, sure, so they weren't completely blank, but there were obvious gaps where the number one's action figures and posters had been before. He looked back down at the framed poster. Prove me wrong, Izuku. As his mother's words jolted through his mind, Izuku gave his first genuine smile since the rooftop. I think I'm gonna leave this one up, he told his friend. What's one more person to prove wrong? <laughs> Inko smiled into her tea and Hizashi cooed over five-year-old Izuku in a present mic onesie. She'd known Hizashi and Shoyuta for almost half a year at this point but they and their son had already irrevocably inserted themselves into her life. She'd lost track of the number of times Izuku had stayed over at Hitoshi's because she got called in for an emergency or had to work late. Speaking of work, she should probably contact her supervisor to see if she could have the day off. He had to have seen the news and she had a few vacation days that she held in reserve for emergencies like this. 
What do you think Toshi and Izuku are doing? They've been in there for a while, haven't they? Shoyuta asked and Nedzu looked at him curiously. Did you hear what Izuku told Hitoshi before he dragged him off? Inko looked at the mammal curiously. What did he say? The principal hummed. I believe it was something along the lines of, I need to tell you something, Hizashi whipped his head towards the principal at his words. Oh my god, Shoyuta, isn't that exactly what you said to me before you confessed? Inko started coughing on her tea. That, was her baby even gay? But, did he swing that way? He'd never told her if he did or not, but he'd never told her about the bullying either. Maybe they were related? She froze a realization struck her. How much did she even know about Izuku? I'd taken her almost half a year of him knowing Hitoshikuen for her to meet him. And she'd been convinced that Katsuki was still his friend, despite everything that he had apparently instigated against her son. She had been seeing and talking to him more lately, yes, but back when he was still in school, she barely saw him due to night shifts and the overtime she worked to keep them afloat. She had a day off every few weeks, but even then, was it all false smiles and facades to keep her from digging too deep and finding out about the bullying? How much did she really know about Izuku? What else hadn't he told her? She set her teacup down in shock. She really didn't know him at all, did she? She was a horrible mother. All she could say about her own son for certain was that he was good at chess and loved heroes with a burning passion. He could cook, he could sew, and always did the chores. She knew for a fact that he was smart, but had no idea how truly intelligent Izuku was until Hitoshi had swept into his life and spurred his self-confidence. Oh God, she was a terrible mother. Inko? A voice broke through her thoughts. Are you okay? The gruff voice of Shoyuta asked her. Oh, she wiped her tears away. When had she started crying? I just realized how little I really know about Izuku. I have absolutely no idea if he even swings that way romantically, and that realization just kinda set me off. Sorry, the black-haired man nodded solemnly. When your kid's hiding something from you and you find out, it kinda causes some sort of revelation along that line. Hizashi did the same thing when we found out Hitoshi was hiding the bullying from us, said Blonde nodded. Oh yeah man I flipped out. Shoyuta had to sit me down and list everything we could remember about Hitoshi to remind me that just one incident of hiding information didn't make him a stranger. Inko smiled sweetly at him. Thank you, she told him. With Izuku now in online school, I'm glad he can't be bullied anymore. But now it looks like that has its own drawbacks, she chuckled sadly. Hizashi smiled at her. Well, the little green beans always welcome with us and you can even go out with Namuri, Shoyuta, and I if you ever need a break. Inko blinked at him. Namuri? Nedzu sipped his tea with a smile. You might know her better as the hero Midnight. Inko raised an eyebrow. The R18 hero? She asked skeptically. She's a lot more than her persona. She teaches at UA too. Inko stared at Shoyuta as she tried to imagine the R18 hero teaching at a high school. Nedzu hummed in agreement. Indeed, I think you two would get along nicely. First of all, I am so happy everyone has enjoyed this story. I had a lot of joy writing it, reading comments, and getting kudos. Thank you all for reading this story and being on this ride with me. Unfortunately, I will be leaving this work unfinished. There have been two big breaks between updates and the reason for that was one, I started college and completely ran out of time and then two, I was experiencing a heck ton of mental health troubles. I have thought about trying to pick this story back up again even if just for the euphoria seeing people enjoy my writing brings, but then when I looked for my drafts and notes and timelines for the story, it turned out I'd somehow deleted them, thanks Google Drive, love that. I had chapters in backup too. I'm really sad that I can't post them sorry. Additionally, I have really fallen out of love with BNHA and lost a lot of my inspiration for this story. Thank you again for all the comments, encouraging words, and love for my story. Don't forget to be considerate to yourselves as well as others. Kaluna.